Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Deku became Masha's hero part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live alike. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Jackachin94 from L3. So let's start the video. Mommy was angry little four years old Masha could tell even though her mother was hiding it very well ever since her intimidatingly powerful quirk had developed Masha's parents were either angry or cautious around her with her white and black striped tiger ears and tail that matched her short white hair with black strands. And with her feline amber eyes the little girl looked cute and innocent. But despite her appearance her quirk came with great power speed and agility, not to mention her extremely enhanced sensory organs and intuition which made Masha able to read someone's mood physical or mental condition and see through lies to sum it up with the development of her superhuman powers the once oh so sweet and lovable child had turned into a white tiger an aggressive beast that easily lost its temper and humanity to strong emotions like anger fear or sadness going on an uncontrollable rampage not caring who was being hurt or what damage was caused to the surroundings it had been almost a year now and Masha was already looking forward to her fifth birthday but her parents were exhausted and sometimes even scared the little girl had tried her hardest not to lose control because of course she didn't want to hurt anyone. But the more she tried it only got worse, she ended up hurting the kindergarten teachers scaring, or even attacking other children, and most recently even her mother wasn't able to calm her down anymore. And that was why Mommy was angry at her, because Masha had used her claws and scratched Mommy's belly. Luckily her mother had been able to step aside and prevent herself from most of the damage, so the cuts weren't deep. But Masha felt miserable after the incident the little girl had cried her eyes out and apologized hysterically multiple times, but her parents had not been able to let her come close to them in fact they were still reluctant to hug or kiss her, or to make any physical contact at all. They tried to mask their true feelings, but Masha was able to read their body language, and to notice the slight changes in their sense, she was still too young to understand everything properly and was barely relying on pure instincts. But she was intelligent enough to realize that her quirk was dangerous and hurting and scaring people around her. So the little girl was afraid of her own powers, and started to keep her distance from her parents, and also from other people she wouldn't be able to invite any other kids to her birthday. The young girl stared out of the window sitting on the back seat of her mother's car. Mommy was taking her to a big city to have some fun today to make up for having to celebrate her birthday all alone. But Masha wasn't excited or happy. She was anxious no matter how much Mommy tried to smile or to tell her that they were going to eat delicious ice cream and buy some presents for her the small girl wasn't able to get rid of the uncomfortable tension she was feeling since they had departed from home something just felt terribly off and Masha wanted to curl up under her blanket mommy had to drive over an hour before they arrived in the big city and Masha had to promise not to let go of her hand and not to leave her side in order not to get lost soon the little girl and her mother were strolling through the city center and for a while Masha's anxiety vanished as she was staring at the big impressive buildings with all their colors and the huge crowd filling the streets Mommy kept her promise, and they were having fun trying some cute dresses on putting weird and way too big sunglasses on their faces and Masha was happy to help her mother to pick some shoes that would look good at work in the post office. The two of them for lunch looked at a beautiful fountain and a lot of funny street performers on their way and stopped by a playground where Masha could run around freely as long as no other children was around and Mommy was reading a newspaper. Before returning home her mother really bought a large ice cream and asked the small girl to sit on a nearby bench Masha Mommy forgot to buy something important for Daddy, she said with an insecure smile on her lips. But her daughter was focused on her treat. So she didn't notice you wait here for me, and eat your ice cream mommy will be back in only a few minutes okay? Be a good girl while mommy is gone yes. Don't bother any people and stay put Masha glanced at her mother briefly with her amber eyes and nodded. Yes mommy Masha will be a good girl and listen as her mother was about to walk away she exhaled strongly and looked at the happy rosy face of the child on the bench tears were filling the woman's eyes and she covered her mouth with one hand mommy loves. You Masha, she assured the little girl with a trembling voice. Never forget this mommy truly loves you. Masha met her mother's gaze with her own loving eyes and smiled. I love you too mommy so much. 
The woman watched her daughter make a gesture that showed how much she loved her with the distance of her small hands growing wider and wider and the big sparkling eyes in her cute baby face sticking on her for a short moment before she turned her back on the child and took big hasty steps away from the bench. Only a few seconds later or so it seemed the woman was walking through a huge shopping mall tears were falling down from her reddened face and she was heading for an exit that would lead her to the parking facility. She left her car in earlier. As for her little daughter Masha, who waited patiently as promised on her bench, while still licking her ice cream, it didn't take very long for her to realize that her mother wouldn't come back to her anymore. But unfortunately very differently from what her parents had expected and hoped for abandoned young tigress Masha, was not found by a kind police officer or an awesome hero patrolling through the night. She was not so lucky as to be put into an orphanage or a caring foster family, and no one helped the lost little girl to gain control of her overflowing emotions and her constantly growing quirk powers white and black striped Masha grew up on the streets on the rooftops and in the dark back alleys of the big shining city. She spent her last happy day with her mommy after about half a year Masha had found a new home and a new family for herself. She was with the street cats of the city now living secretly in the shadows of the human society she had figured out that in order for her and her new friends to survive it was absolutely necessary for them to kill or to steal it wasn't a question of right or wrong anymore so the young tigress learned how to hunt down mice rats birds and sometimes even stray dogs which tried to attack the kittens. Although Masha knew they weren't using any words or human language, she was able to communicate quite well with the cats and sometimes they were able to trick some people to steal food. She still didn't want to hurt human beings, so the little girl hid during the day and only came out after sunset when less people were around, and she kept a big distance from the nightlife district. It was noisy smelly and full of rowdy people however on one sunny day, the young tigress was awakened by a loud bang and crying voices it sounded like quarreling kids. And since Masha was sleeping on top of a garage of an one-family house near a playground that made some sense, but what about that noise? Masha quickly jumped down and ran towards the direction she was sure that loud bang came from Kakin Stop It. An angry, but very young voice cried desperately look, he's crying already. I will never forgive you if you don't stop it right now. Wow this child is very brave the small girl thought while turning around a corner tracing the kid who obviously tried to protect another boy from that said Kaken, she could hear someone laugh and yell a sneering answer. But a second explosion made it impossible for her to understand the words clearly Masha continued to run down the street, and shortly before she arrived at the playground, a boy in a pale yellow t-shirt passed her in a hurry. He wasn't even looking at her as big tears were flowing down his cheeks, and he was calling loudly for his mommy. I'm sorry for him. But he's also lucky Masha thought sadly. While looking at the back of the bullied boy, his mommy will come and care for him slowly. She walked to the playground and saw a second boy with greenish dark hair lying on the floor on his back staring at the blue sky above him. As she came closer, she noticed that he was covered in scratches and bruises. Was he the protector? Masha stopped hesitantly because she knew being close to other kids could be dangerous for them. You okay? She asked clumsily she hadn't talked to anyone in a while. The boy sat up startled and looked at her with big green eyes with his messy hair and the freckles on his cheeks. He was absolutely adorable Masha blushed instantly. He seemed surprised to see her but nodded slowly. Why yeah, I'm fine he mumbled. I got in a fight. The boy tried to get up on his feet again and winced Masha wanted to help him but was afraid of hurting him even more instead. So she kept her safe distance you fought Kaken. Is he mean? She asked instead, and the boy's green eyes widened a bit. How do you know? The young girl pointed at her tiger ears. I can hear very well you told this Kaken guy to stop. And then it made boom with shining eyes. He stared at her ears and also noticed her tail. Well, they're so cool. He exclaimed enthusiastically and Masha blushed. Even more I wish I had such a cool quirk. The boy continued and hung his head Kakin is actually my best friend. We're always together. He's so cool and brave and strong. I want to be like him too, but the doctor says I have no quirk at all and I'll never get one. Masha's ears drooped seeing the kind boy being depressed. She decided to cheer him up, even if that meant that he would be afraid of her afterwards. My quirk 
is not cool. The little tiger girl started it's scary. It hurts people. I don't want to hurt people, but my quirk makes me do it. I hurt my mommy so my parents are angry and scared. Everyone is always afraid of me. She explained calmly that Kakin is not cool at all. He likes to bully others you're much much better than him. You don't need a quirk you protected the boy without a quirk you're awesome. Surprised the green haired boy gazed at the young tigress. His mouth agape I I am awesome. Masha nodded again fiercely don't be friends with that bully. Don't become like him. It was the first time in the little boy's life that someone had actually called him awesome or better than anyone else he had no friends except Kakin and he called him weak and useless even his mother and the doctor had told him to give up on his dreams because he was quirkless. He couldn't help but to start crying I want to be a hero. He admitted sobbingly much to Masha's surprise. I want to be the number one hero like All Might and save people with a smile. The little girl giggled and pointed at his tears. Yeah that's better than becoming a meanie like your friend, but first you have to stop crying. The kind-hearted boy wiped his tears and began giggling along you're very nice. Thank you he said finally showing her a bright and very cute smile. I'm Izuku Masha was glad that he cheered up and returned the smile Masha. After their first encounter the young tigress felt happy and warm inside. So she hoped to see the adorable little boy again. Because Izuku-kun was still kind of hard to say for her, she ended up stuttering and finally calling her new friend Izuki-on at first. She was very hesitant to approach him waited for moments when no other kids or also adults were around, and only carefully came closer to actually play with him. But small Izuku never showed any signs of being afraid of her and Masher realized very soon that she never got angry or out of control near him in contrast. The little girl seemed to calm down whenever she saw Izuku smiling and waving his hands at her. He never mocked her or tried to pick a fight playing, and talking with him was very peaceful. Masha soon built up the confidence to be close to the young Midoriya boy, even hugging him sometimes causing her shy friend to blush as they met at the playground on almost regular basis and strolled through the neighborhood where Izuku was living with his mommy and Masha showed him some of her stray cat friends the two kids got to know each other pretty well and learned about their background stories. Izuku was very shocked that Masha had been abandoned by her parents and had to live on the streets he even started crying for her sake. But the young cat girl calmed him down and made him promise not to tell this to his mother or to other adults because she was afraid of getting caught by the police. If they put me into a house with many other kids, I will harm them again Masha explained unhappy. Maybe it's better like that I don't hate mommy and daddy just before her mother had left her she had told Masha that she loved her the little girl still remembered this moment very well and cherished it in her heart like a treasure. She was sure that it hadn't been a lie living with the cats. Now also wasn't that bad Masha survived pretty well, and was free to do whatever she pleased without being scared of losing control over her quirk. While growing up and getting even stronger and faster, she made the shadiest streets and back alleys her territory the whole town became her playground she jumped over rooftops and dashed through the night. But a life on the streets of a big city for a lonely young girl was nothing to be called easy or peaceful Masha learned her biggest and maybe also her most important lesson when she was about seven years old. A guy was staggering down the small lane where the young tigress was sitting on a dumpster. He looked shabby and broke, and was apparently drunk. But nevertheless she could sense the threat coming from him, so she tried to avoid a confrontation however. There were always those people who would attack someone looking weaker, even without a clear purpose in an instant Masha was violently shoved against a wall. She hadn't even been able to see an attack coming and pain rushed through her entire body. The wall behind her made a crumbling noise and cracks were running over its surface. While the young girl struggled in the stranger's tight grip, she could smell sweat smoke of cigarettes and that guy's foul breath. She didn't even know what his quirk was but her instincts of a wild beast took over immediately Masha showed her extended fangs and hissed her amber feline eyes widened in bare fury and black tiger stripes slowly began to expand over her cheeks. She remembered the middle-aged man staring at her in surprise first then in horror and finally she heard him scream in a high-pitched voice in the next moment. She was blinking confusedly at the dead body lying on the ground in its own ponding blood her fingers with the still extended predator claws, and her clothes were covered in crimson red blood to Masha, 
had just killed a human she had sliced open the torso of that guy who had attacked her. At this turning point in her young life innocent little masher realized that surviving sometimes also meant fighting for one's own life and that there would always be some bad guys who would do bad things to other people the choice had been her own life or that of the drunken guy and Masha had chosen to protect her own one survival of the fittest from that time on her point of view changed from not wanting to hurt anyone to not wanting to see anyone get hurt or getting hurt herself by bad guys much like Izakion had protected a boy whom he had never seen before from his actual best friend the difference was that the kind-hearted green-haired boy wanted to be a hero and heroes never killed the bad guys so for Masha that wasn't an option anymore besides with her bad temper and without any control over her quirk powers that would never be an option anyways but quirk less little Izuku never judged her or was scared of her not even once and he wanted to continue to be her friend. Although he was certainly not okay with killing people, even if they did very bad things Masha wasn't exactly happy about that either, so she hugged her best friend tightly, and shed some tears leaning against his shoulder as she went on with her life in the shadows. The young tigress happened to stumble over more small fry like that drunkard they were no real villains, sometimes hardly even criminals those people were just poor desperate ill-mannered and once in a while also violent some of them were addicted to alcohol or other drugs, and most of them just tried to survive, and were having a hard time. Other people would wrinkle their noses and call them scums Masha pitied them as long as they behaved themselves around her. But those who were stupid enough to threaten her or other innocent people, while she was present were less lucky. Sometimes it was enough to just scare them away with her flashing angry eyes, and her low tiger growling Masha wouldn't walk around killing everyone in her way or some poor little thief who stole a handbag or something like that. But as she reached an age of nine years, she had taken five lives of human beings three of them had tried to kill herself one had attempted to rape a young teenage girl on her way home from a party, and the last one had been about to shoot another guy with a gun. If the young tigress hadn't interfered in each case, the life taken would have been her own or an innocent one. So even though she had known she wouldn't be able to control herself, she had decided to act, rather than to just wait and watch, or to ignore and walk away during these two years. Izuku had always been the one to keep Masha grounded to her. She did the right thing, and that was her fault. And she was the one who continued to tell her green-haired friend that he could become a great hero despite being quirk less no matter what other people told him however rumors were spreading through the city. Now that there was a cat-like monster living in the slums which frightened and sometimes even punished people who did wrong the police was investigating the five murders and several people the two rescued ones among them testified that they had seen a small figure with cat ears and a tale the positive aspect was that it was much easier to chase away shady people with her appearance now, but it was also harder to stay hidden police officers were patrolling more often, and also the heroes were on guard. It was difficult to get something to eat and her visits at a certain playground began to decrease more and more, while dealing with all that chaos a young woman entered Masha's life without even noticing it. She was beautiful gentle and friendly Masha watched her every morning before going to work as she was feeding the stray cats. The woman petted them played with them, and then took her leave to a nearby animal shelter where she stayed until evening so Masha assumed that the woman was working there. Sometimes the slender built woman with blonde shoulder length hair and warm hazel eyes also came on Saturdays took her time with the kitties and then went to a grocery store before returning to her home Masha liked her for caring for the cats and for being so calm and friendly her smile reminded the young girl of Izakian when he sometimes brought some self-made snacks from his mommy to the playground to share them with Masha. They were both that kind of gentle people who cared for others. Later on Masha also learned that the woman had the ability to speak with animals from her cat friends. And she liked her even more than one evening when the little tigress was waiting to see the blonde woman on her way back home again. She suddenly heard a loud scream coming from one of the big main streets. Leading through the city her body moved before she could even think Masha jumped over some rooftops to arrive on a building right next to the street people were shouting and running around in a panic cars were scattered across the street. Some of them still had their doors wide open hero. A dark-haired guy cried hysterically. Isn't there a hero around? Call a hero. And then Masha spotted the reason behind that entire ruckus a huge and muscular creature with blue skin long horns on its forehead 
and large canine teeth growing from his lower jaw was standing in the middle of the street. He looked much like an ogre, and he was obviously a strong villain in front of the loudly yelling bad guy. A blonde woman cowered on the ground, holding her ankle and grimacing in pain. Masher recognized the nice lady from the animal shelter and stared in shock at the blue monster, lifting a big fist out of my way bitch. He growled angrily, and his massive arm moved downwards just before the punch could hit the woman Masha threw herself down the roof she was standing on, and in battle at a high speed that she didn't even know that she was capable of with a loud bang the young tigress crashed into the giant's face, causing him to step back and fall over a car right behind him Masha landed on her feet, turned around grabbed the woman's back and her legs, and started running as fast as possible behind the next door and some cars she put her down very carefully because her claws were fully extended. With wide and teary eyes, the woman looked up to her, her whole body was shaking in fear you okay. Masha asked and tried to sound friendly. She looked at the woman's ankle does it hurt? The scared woman followed Masha's gaze and touched her foot. Uh, uh yes a little. I think it's sprained she stuttered. I, I tried to run away, but someone pushed me from behind and I fell down she met Masha's amber eyes again and covered her mouth with one hand in realization oh my, you're still a child. Her eyes were examining the young girl's body quickly, are you uninjured? The girl only nodded. Thank you so much for saving me that was very brave, but also very dangerous, you know Masha forced herself to relax a little bit and smiled she knew with her claws and fangs out and with her black tiger stripes covering her cheeks when being enraged like this, she looked scary to other people. I'm fine she assured the nice lady you're the friendly woman from the animal shelter who always feeds the street cats right. They do like you very much the woman nodded her head surprised. Yes I like cats a lot, I have two of them at home, but how do you know? Masha avoided her gaze and looked on the floor instead. I see you every morning finally the woman showed her a kind smile again oh is that so? Then I think I should introduce myself to my savior my name is Shirigawa Kahono nice. To meet you Masha bowed awkwardly. She felt like she had never done this before and wasn't quite sure if she did it correctly nice to meet you too I'm Masha. A loud bang followed by a furious roar interrupted their conversation and the little tigress glanced around the corner. The blue monster had thrown the car he had stumbled over earlier into an office building and was drumming with his huge fists on his puffed-out chest okay now he was playing King Kong. Masha was worried about the bunch of people that was still out on the street. If the blue ogre continued to rampage like that someone could easily get hurt or even killed just where were all those heroes when they were needed. Masha hissed angrily her inner tigress was not okay with that kind of situation at all and she felt that she was closely on edge of losing herself please try to get away from here. She told a Miss Shirigawa without looking at her keeping a close eye on the Colossus, I will try to distract him until a hero arrives so go and save yourself. And with that said Masha charged at the villain again, while the woman screamed her name worriedly behind her back. She was very much aware that her powers weren't even close to be able to keep up with his the earlier impact on his head or better in his face, seemed to have had no effect at all, except for a little nosebleed and extreme rage. Also she wasn't sure if her claws could actually cut through his thick skin. But she was faster and much more agile Masha, just hoped to keep this big guy away from the innocent citizens long enough for a pro hero to arrive she hopped and bopped around the blue giant growled at him, scratched him with her claws, did somersaults in mid-air and backflips on the ground Masha, avoided all his attacks and powerful punches, flawlessly jumped and dashed and jumped again for a while. She perfectly managed to outmaneuver the stupid meatball, but that only made him go mad as hell. The next time he swung both of his fists at her, and she dodged the massive impact left a big crater in the asphalt of the street terrified. She felt the ground shake under her feet, and she stared in shock at the hole he had just created with his bare hands Masha panted heavily, and she felt the exhaustion slowing her down her legs were trembling already. She wouldn't be able to keep this up much longer. Just in that moment, the ogre picked up another car, but he didn't throw it at her. The vehicle was flying towards some people who tried to evacuate from the office building the first car had crashed into. Annoying flies. 
The blue villain grunted Masha sprinted with everything she got left and shoved two young men in business suits out of the way. Only for herself it hadn't been enough speed the car grazed her shoulder, and the clash sent her flying the young tigress thudded on the ground, and the stabbing pain in her shoulder filled her eyes with tears her entire body was aching as she got up on her feet again, and her arm was hanging down in a weird and twisted way. Masha turned her head to search for the two guys she had tackled with full speed. She found them not too far away from herself lying on the street, as well gazing at her with wide disbelieving eyes next to them was M.S. Shiragawa attempting to help them get up. But she froze in her movement with a horrified facial expression, what are you doing? Masha shouted at them and held her throbbing shoulder run you idiots, move your butts. At the same time, the massive body of the villain appeared right in front of the little cat girl, his fist ready to strike once again got you damn brat. He cackled maliciously, and the young tigress scared stiff, awaiting the final blow Masha. Shiragawa screamed desperately in a very high-pitched voice. The two young men besides her were still too shocked to get up from the floor. I'm so glad they're safe Masha thought for herself, while staring at the blue dumb head still in a flaming temper. But instead of an impact pain and breaking bones the young girl felt something strange wrapping around her body from behind pulling her away from the fist that was about to shatter her to pieces carefully. She was placed into the arms of a black-haired unshaved and very tired-looking dude who had saved her with something that looked like a very long grey scarf from his left and his right side behind him some flashy guys in colorful costumes and capes came running to the scene as well Masha exhaled relieved the heroes had finally arrived. Thank you very much. She sighed exhaustedly at the hero with a shoulder-length black hair. He looked down on her with his tired eyes and nodded once you did well. He complimented her with a monotonous voice and she beamed at him happily a pro hero just praised her. She had to tell Izakian he would freak out. Now rest and leave it to us. The little girl felt her consciousness fading away and began to panic. What if they put her in a hospital or even worse in an orphanage? People would be very close to her other children would be in danger. Masha struggled in the arms of the hero, but winced because of the massive pain she started feeling even stronger every minute. Now you don't have to be afraid, I won't harm you. The dark-haired man looked at her questioningly. My quirk is dangerous for others around me. Masha tried to explain with her already weakening voice, and the hero furrowed his brows. I don't want to, but I end up hurting people. I lose control very easily. I can't go to a hospital you have to tie me up. He nodded again. This time he seemed to understand why she was fighting back at him. Don't worry I can erase your quirk if needed. I won't let you hurt any people that's my job right? Masha's head plopped against his shoulder erase her quirk. Was that his power? Darkness started to surround her senses. Don't let anyone come close to me when I wake up. She pleaded her voice, only a whisper now no other children. Around me, she mumbled right before she passed out completely Masha awakened in a sterile hospital room. Everything was white and clean, no other people were around, and no other beds were in the room except hers. She sighed relieved that this hero had obviously listened properly to her explanations and sniffed cautiously only to wrinkle her nose at the typical hospital smell it reeked of medicine and disinfectant. But she could also sense different people who had entered the room previously as she looked around her room Masha noticed it was almost empty except for her bed and a small side table. But on the windowsill there were placed some flowers, small plush toys and colorful cards with cute motifs. Fortunately for the young girl Izakian was a very smart and concerned best friend who would always worry about her future and thus kept telling her that even if she lived on the streets she would need some basic knowledge and started teaching her since he had entered elementary school from the beginning the boy with the greenish dark hair had shared his teaching materials of his classes with her, so she could clearly read thank you, and get well soon. On the covers of the cards and wondered who put them there. Masha slowly sat up in her bed, and was glad she didn't feel any pain anymore her shoulder was bandaged. But it didn't hurt like before which was a great relief for her. And the little tigress couldn't find any other wounds scratches or bruises on her body. So either someone had used a healing ability on her, or she had been asleep for quite a long time. The scrubs she was wearing had small cute animal prints on them, and somehow her skin seemed much cleaner than she could remember had they washed her.
A drip had been attached to her arm, and she eyed up the transparent liquid skeptically voices and footsteps from outside called Masha's attention to the door that opened in the next moment, and a brunette young nurse entered the room she was wearing a white lab coat and had her hair tied up in a messy bun. As she looked at her young patient and noticed that Masha was awake, she smiled warmly and stopped at the entrance, so the hospital staff had been warned to oh look, who's awake our young future hero. The nurse said friendly and gestured towards the windowsill you already have some fans the two good-looking guys you rescued were here to say thank you and asked how you were doing they were very worried and also brought the plushies and the cards. Masha looked at her presence confusedly how long did I sleep? The dark-haired woman looked at her clipboard three days she answered and flipped a page. But your stamina is quite amazing so we could have someone use a strong healing quirk on you. Your shoulder should be completely fine in one or two days without any permanent damages. May I come in and change your bandage? Masha closed her eyes and thought for a moment she wasn't afraid or angry or in pain, and the nurse seemed nice, so she nodded hesitantly. But no injections please the young brunette woman giggled and came closer to the bed to check on Masha's shoulder. No, I don't like them either she said, while removing the old braces Masha kept still while being treated. We also washed you, and did your hair a little wanna have a look? The nurse winked at her like a little girl, and showed her a small round mirror she had brought with her along with the new dressing material. The young tigress took the mirror and stared at herself her white hair with the black strands had obviously been washed cut, and combed usually Masha always cut it by herself with her sharp claws, so her hair used to look scrubby, but now it looked like a short-cut modern girl's hairstyle. She smiled happily thank you. The nurse smiled back at her. You're very welcome you like it. The little girl nodded and gave the mirror back I'm glad. I really did my best. But I'm no pro hairdresser the brunette woman opened the window to let in some fresh air and went back to the door. There are some nice people waiting for you outside the black dressed hero who carried you here and a friendly blonde lady who brought the flowers yesterday can I let them in. Masha nodded again in big surprise and watched her two visitors come into the room. Mashirigawa was holding a small colorful shopping bag and beamed at her, whereas the black-haired hero still looked tired and bored to death. He had dark circles around his eyes and his hands were pushed into his pockets. Oh Masha, I'm so glad you're fine. I was worried to death. The blonde young woman said and her hazel eyes still seemed anxious as she approached the bed and put her arms around the little girl carefully thank you so much for saving my life. She kissed the girl's forehead and smiled with teary eyes, and I'm sorry for letting you get hurt like this before Masha could even find an answer, and tell her that it was not her fault and as Shirogawa showed her the brightly colored bag. I've got some new clothes for you, she explained proudly yours were torn up and dirty, so we had to throw them away. I didn't know what you like so I picked some that I thought would look good on you. I hope you're okay with that the young tigress couldn't believe her eyes when the nice lady from the animal shelter started to take out the clothes of the shopping bag. There were two t-shirts one in a light blue color and a dark purple one with pink flowers one white pair of shorts black leggings some underwear and socks and even an orange pajama with a cartoon tiger head on the top astonished. And with her mouth wide agape the young girl gazed at the new outfits she even got something to change. That was more than she ever had suddenly Masha felt tears filling up her amber eyes and flowing down her face. How long had it been since someone except Izuku had been nice to her or had cared for her well-being? She couldn't even remember. And here she was sitting on a bed in a hospital receiving flowers cards plush animals and new clothes from strangers being treated nicely and carefully since she woke up and hearing nothing but friendly words from people she hadn't even seen before they had washed her treated her thanked her and worried about her. But she still felt like she didn't deserve so much kindness. She Masha the white tiger the aggressive monster with a scary uncontrollable quirk, and the dangerously explosive temper Ms. Shirogawa sat down on the bed next to her to hug her again and Masha started sobbing loudly. The whole situation was just overwhelming for the small girl and she let out her piled-up emotions drenching the shirt of the nice lady with her tears, she remembered very well that the black-haired dude had promised her to erase her quirk, 
If she would lose control so Masha didn't hold back at this moment, causing her to be very ashamed of herself later on. When she faced the two adults who came to visit her after she calmed down, she let Ms. Shiragawa help her to put some of her new clothes on, and Mr. Aizawa Shota, or Eraser Head, how the male hero introduced himself stepped forward to the bed for the first time since he had entered the room he explained Masha that the police wanted to question her about the incident with that blue hulk, and also that the youth welfare office had been informed because the hospital staff and the heroes hadn't been able to find her parents the ears of the young tigress drooped, but she agreed to talk to the police the next day if Mr. Palmer Aizawa would also be present only in case she had to be calmed down quickly however the young man who visited Masha at the hospital the next day together with Mr. Aizawa didn't look like a typical police officer. He wasn't wearing a uniform, but a beige trench coat with matching hat and underneath a dark suit his name was Tsukachi Neyamasa, and he had dark short hair and dark eyes in an angular. But nevertheless friendly face Detective Tsukachi questioned Masha professionally but not without showing her a smile occasionally, or sometimes also knitting his brows. While taking notes the young girl told the detective and the pro hero her whole life story also admitting the five murders and her interfering in the case with the blue ogre villain and some other minor crime cases she had come across while living on the streets of this city for four years. She only left out Midoriya Izuku because she feared causing trouble for him and his mommy when the police would find out that he knew about her all along and especially about her killing five people am I going to be punished? Masha asked after the questioning was over the detective side, and shook his head his eyes were looking somehow sad no Masha nothing of what has happened up until now was your fault. Besides you're too young for jail, he grinned at her after the last comment and Masha noticed that the detective had made a joke to cheer her up. She smiled back at him thankfully. And he and Mr. Aizawa took their leave in the evening Ms. Shiragawa came again and brought her some fruit. They talked about the interview and the blue villain incident and finally Masha also found the courage to tell the friendly woman about Izuku and that she had kept him a secret from Detective Tsukachi and Mr. Cursor. Aizawa I haven't seen him in a while now. I miss him very much she admitted while blushing slightly. I hope he doesn't worry too much. They won't let me go back to the stray cats anymore and I will have to go to a therapy and quirk training, and all that stuff I don't think that I'll have time to sneak out to meet him at the playground. The blonde grinned teasingly, and poked the young girl with her finger someone has a crush. Masha's face grew dark red, and she hid it behind her hands t, that's not true. She complained, and they both started laughing leave your cat friends to me. I keep feeding them every morning. They all seem to be healthy and energetic, as always Ms. Shiragawa said. As for your little boyfriend, how about I go to the playground and talk to him? Of course, I will have to visit his mother at home officially as a stranger. I can't just walk around approaching children on a playground. That would be suspicious. Would you be okay with both of them hearing your story? Masha picked up another piece of rabbit-shaped apples. He's not my boyfriend. She insisted huffily but it would be very nice of you if you could talk to him and his mommy Ms. Shiragawa. I just hope she won't scold him too much for keeping me a secret from her. The kind woman smiled and ruffled the girl's short hair, lovingly call me Kahono. We're friends who share a secret now only a few days later Kahono kept her promise and went to the park with the playground that Masha had described and searched for a little nine years old boy with greenish dark messy hair big green eyes and freckles on his cheeks luckily. She didn't have to wait very long, because Izuku arrived shortly after her and looked around everywhere seeming a little disappointed the blonde smiled, knowingly seeing the young boy's sad eyes, and came closer to him slowly introducing herself very politely at first. The small Midoriya was kind of reserved, but opened up a little bit after hearing Masha's name and seeing a picture of her on Kahono's smartphone finally the young boy agreed to invite the kind lady to his home and she followed him to the apartment as Mrs. Midoriya welcomed her friendly Kahono apologized multiple times for intruding so rudely, but the other woman who had the same hair and eye color as her son wasn't offended at all and offered the blonde some tea of course Midoriya Inko Izuku's mother was very shocked when she learned about little Masha's background story and also had some serious words for her son. 
but he was already feeling guilty for what had happened to his friend and Inko was much more furious about the fact that parents could abandon their own child so easily so she didn't end up scolding her son too much later in the evening when Kahono was about to leave she exchanged phone numbers with Inko and promised her to keep her updated and to let her know as soon as it was allowed to visit Masha wherever she would be living in near future that was so the public authorities had decided after Masha got released from hospital and institute and therapy center for traumatized children and children who had uncontrollable or dangerous quirk abilities some of them had hurt or even killed people sometimes the own siblings or parents accidentally and the children in the center had also been abandoned by their scared or overextended exhausted parents for Masha it was a huge surprised that she wasn't an exception, but it made it easier for her to agree on living there because restrictions of and Detective Shukachi promised just that there would be people found who could prevent trust tech and case staffs. The young tigress got a new temporary home with like-minded children and specially chosen and skilled employees. She started to talk to a psychologist frequently and also participated in group sessions with the other children. They got school classes to catch up with the necessary education, did a lot of sports to get rid of excess energy and emotions, and learned how to meditate to do yoga and tai chi to clear their minds calm down and get a better self-control. But the best thing was the quirk-based training monitored by volunteer pro heroes because once a week Eraserhead, Eka Mr. Aizawa Eka Uncle Shota, how Masha started to call him at some point, had agreed to tutor the kids himself after three months of settling in the young girl, was finally allowed to have visitors for the first time. And she was so happy to see Kahono again. And even Detective Tsukachi came to check on her and gave his greetings the five murder cases as well as the blue villain case had been closed by now. And then the day had come when Masha was reunited with her Izakyun together, with his mommy Auntie Inko in Masha's case. And with Kahono, the green-haired little boy entered the lobby of the therapy center, where the young tigress spotted him right away and flung her arms around his neck with an impressive jump of pure joy. The two kids lost their balance and landed on the floor giggling, while Mrs. Midoriya was moved to tears and Kahono patted her shoulder sympathetically of course. There were also times when Masha suffered great setbacks and lost herself. But she was never scolded for it. And she never had to be afraid of being abandoned by anyone anymore. On the contrary, her mistakes could be used to learn from them. And they analyzed them closely in the therapy sessions. Soon enough, Masha celebrated her 10th birthday at the institute with some of the staff. The other children, Auntie Inko Izakyun Kahono and Tsukachi. Uncle Shota had an emergency and had to move out for some hero work. But he made up for it visiting her the next day with some very good news Shirigawa Kahono had requested to be appointed as Masha's legal guardian. And it had been granted as well as putting Aizawa Shota in charge of a kind of supervisor or godfather figure for the two of them. If the young girl's great progress would keep up she could be released in very near future and live with the blonde woman which caused both of them to cry tears of joy shortly before Masher reached the age of 11 years. All the paperwork was done Kahono had already moved to a slightly bigger apartment near the animal shelter where she continued to work and the doctors and the administration had also given their approval to discharge the young tiger under the conditions that Eraserhead would have an eye on the newly formed little family and Masha's quirk development, and that the young girl would attend ambulant therapy sessions as she turned 12 Masha had the qualification and the official allowance to enter a public middle school and the adoption proceeding was going smoothly making sure Masha oh no her official parent unfortunately she couldn't go to the same middle school as Izuku. The two friends never lost contact during her new life as middle school student Masha was just getting along quite west with his classmates. And although she couldn't build any very close friendships, she became more surprised than she was. In her second year, Uncle Shota began pestering her to enroll in the hero course of U.A. high school after her graduation. And her mother went along with his stupid suggestions. Puffing out her chest and pride on top of that even Izakyun tried to convince her by telling her that he would be taking the entrance exams too despite being quirkless. And if they both passed they could attend the same high school this time, and with good luck maybe even the same class Masha sighed in disbelief looking at the display of her smartphone. She was glad that her best friend wasn't giving up on his dreams, but why the heck did he think she had to tag along? The young girl knew that Bully Kekin was in the same class as Izuku and he was giving him a very hard time, and more than anything else, she wanted to be a support for her childhood friend, but a hero. 
She never had thought about herself becoming a hero with her messed up past and her way of thinking, which still didn't fit the hero policy in a strange way, killing a villain who had done terrible things to innocent weak people and who could possibly do them again wasn't such a big deal for her nothing wrong. With a little bit of violence, the world would be better off without the bad guys anyways. Honestly, not a very heroic attitude. Not that Masha cared much, but Uncle Shoda and her mom were going on her nerves like crazy her third, and last year was all about learning learning and again learning. Masha hadn't seen Izekiyun in ages. They hadn't even celebrated both of their 15th birthdays together as usual. The only thoughts were graduation possible high schools and entrance exams. Even the messages the two of them were texting each other had reached an absolute minimum until one early evening when Masha's mom Kahono stormed into her room with a very shocked expression Masha Izuku is in the news. The young teenage girl jumped up and ran into the living room, staring at the TV with widened amber eyes. She saw an awful sludge villain holding a very light blonde boy with spiky hair in about her own age. As a hostage his red eyes looked frightened, but also eager to fight several heroes were already present trying to rescue the guy then something exploded and black smoke was rising into the sky. But the boy couldn't escape the grip of the muddy monster. Then suddenly another teenage boy with greenish dark hair came running at the scene Kekin. Izekiyun cried desperately and Masha's jaw dropped as she watched her best friend throwing his backpack at the villain and attempting to pull out the blonde of the mud with his bare hands Kakin. Wasn't that the meanie who couldn't do anything but bully Izuku all the time? And there he was risking his life for this damn jerk. Masha narrowed her feline eyes. She would be sure to give Izekiyun a piece of her mind. What the hell was he thinking in a situation like that? And without a quirk? As if all of that hadn't been unbelievable enough the number one hero all might appeared out of nowhere. Masha hadn't even heard that he was in the city. Of course the blonde, an always brightly smiling man handled everything flawlessly on his own. The boy Kakin was saved the sludge villain captured, and the crowd was cheering for him like for a rock star Masha's mom sighed in relief, and sat herself down on the sofa, where her two male pet cats were sleeping unimpressed oh thank goodness. Also the young tigress exhaled slowly. I can't even scold him now. She protested and pouted with her arms crossed over her chest. Kahono just raised her eyebrows. He just met All Might knowing him, he won't even listen to a word I say, and switch into maniac mode muttering about how freaking awesome he was her mother started laughing at her daughter's comment about her childhood friend very well aware that she did have a point. But still you should give him a call the blonde woman noted. I'm just glad he's safe and sound Masha nodded along in agreement and grinned she was too. The day of the hero exam has finally come with a skeptical. I Masha spins in front of her big mirror frowning at her middle school uniform the dark grey and black checkered mini skirt with the matching necktie and the short-sleeved white blouse still look way too conservative altogether. Although the teenage girl has stuffed the blouse into her skirt to hug her curves in a more flattering way and has paired the whole outfit with white tiger print stockings for an outfit to live up to her image, is somewhat difficult that way Masha sighs and looks at her chin-length white and black striped hair instead since she got another haircut after graduating from middle school, and it always seems a bit messy due to the longer and slightly curly bangs that cover her forehead. Sometimes the young tigress actually wonders if she has real cat fur on her head like she has on her ears, and long fluffy tail her feline amber eyes meet their reflection checking on the discreet natural makeup on her face again. Everything's fine but somehow still not satisfying enough. Maybe that's because of the nervousness behind her back Masha's mom enters her room, followed by the two tomcats Jin and Hiro. She smiles proudly at her daughter, while their cats jump on the bed to take a nap look at my little tigress. All grown up now you're so beautiful. Masha turns around and smiles back rubbing the back of her head sheepishly. I'm wearing my school uniform mom. You know the one I've been wearing since I started middle school three years ago. Her mother giggles like a young girl well you're always beautiful no matter what you wear the two of them laugh together and Kahono hands over a prepared lunchbox to her daughter. Will you meet up with Izuku? Masha nods and grabs her black backpack do you have everything you need? She nods again and hums in confirmation making her way to the door and putting her shoes on. The blonde woman hugs Masha. Warmly don't be nervous remember that Masha means willpower. 
You can do everything you want to do. She reminds the young girl good luck to the both of you. Give Izuku my greetings with that being said Masha exits the apartment and runs to the bus stop to take the bus to you. A high school uncle Shota her mom and Izukiun had finally managed to convince her to take the entrance exam and even Detective Tsukachi had been overly supportive of that idea. So Masha had given in at last upon arriving at the school grounds Masha looks at her smartphone only to see that Izuku hasn't texted her yet and that she's later than she thought she would be a big flashy sign reads entrance exam and Masha whistles lowly. If that isn't an invitation I don't know what is. She looks around just in time to catch Izukiun completely dressed in black clothing and red shoes being prevented from tripping by a cute brown-haired girl. A playful little cat smirk appearing on her lips Masha watches her childhood friend turn bright red and stare at the other young girl in a daze oh come on Izukiun. At least say thank you. The young tigress pouts and the dark green-haired boy almost jumps from hearing her voice so close behind him. You really haven't changed at all Masha teases him with a loving smile Masha. Izuku beams at her brightly with his big adorable green eyes and she hugs him tightly in greeting like she always does noticing that his body has changed drastically so the hard training he told her about was a great success geez Mr. Brick Wall. Exactly how much did you work out the past few months? She comments lightheartedly causing her friend to blush. Even more H, how long have you been around already? Her cat-like smirk grows more mischievous oh long enough Tilda. She sings twitching her tiger ears in amusement mommy, said good luck to you, the teenage boy smiles, and begins to search for something in his pockets, all right. My mother is also cheering for us, when she heard that you would be taking the exam with me. She told me to give this to you Izuku holds up a small good luck charm and Masha accepts it happily. It's actually for good grades the young girl sighs well I'm also in need of good grades besides it's the thought that counts the two childhood friends hurry inside the building receive their cards and take their seats in the large auditorium quickly on Izakyun's other side Masha spots. The guy with spiky light blonde hair and flaring red eyes from TV. So that's Kaken she thinks and narrows her amber eyes at him honestly. It's such a shame that the evil guys always look so good. She wouldn't forgive him for hurting Izuku over so many years, even if that blondie was such a handsome little bastard. Izukiun notices Masha's intense glaring at his other childhood friend and sweat drops the young tigress, sensing the upcoming panic of her green-haired friend, just rolls her eyes at him. I won't kill him relaxed. She mumbles while shifting her attention to the empty stage in front of them. You, ah uh, yeah sorry he stutters and exhales slowly a few minutes later. The auditorium is packed with students and soon enough lights start to illuminate the stage from above and the pro hero present Mike screams out enthusiastically to his audience however to his disappointment. The big hall stays quiet and there is a rather embarrassing break before he tries again. After I drop my mic here you'll head to your specified battle center sounds good. Silence. Masha stifles her laughter poor guy. Having to pity a pro hero, the first time one enters you are the best of the best hero high schools, is truly something she'd never expected. I'm in center C she states, and looks at Izuku hanging his head. I'm in B he replies in an unhappy voice. I thought we could give our best together Ah, he's just too adorable. We still can. Masha assures him with a genuine smile, we just have to pass. Piece of cake. She gives him a thumb up, and her friend starts to giggle and shakes his head. Yeah you're right never did something easier Masha grins you bet. What's with our very likable friend over there? She points at the seat besides the green-haired boy Izuku, has to cover his mouth with his hands to not let out a very loud laugh, seems like he'll be in center. He somehow manages to answer right at the moment, when a spotlight bursts from above and lands on a standing student. Only a few rows down Masha watches with her mouth wide open as a stiff guy with glasses scolds present Mike for how they shouldn't have to deal with improper forms or something. Is that dude just stupid or does he have guts? The white and black haired girls. Not so sure about that additionally you two with the messy hair glasses guy addresses both Izuku and Masha and they blink at each other quite confused you've been talking this entire time. Stop that. If you can't bother to take this seriously, then leave your distracting the rest of us, 
He continues Izakion apologizes immediately after being told off, while Masha just raises her eyebrows okay definitely stupid. She whispers to herself, while her friend looks questioningly at her the next few minutes feel like ages, as the blonde pro hero goes on to explain the whole exam process. But soon enough Masha and Izuku have to part ways to board different buses they fist bump, as they wish each other the best of luck Masha takes a final glance over her shoulder to watch her friend's back and runs towards her own bus, which will take her to center C at the beginning of the hero exam. The young tigress uses her enhanced speed strength and agility to take down many of the robot villains which are the current opponents of the students with her long and sharp claws. She's easily able to cut them in half and go on to the next enemy right after Masha doesn't really pay attention to her score though. She simply keeps running and jumping through the streets of the artificial city and slices up every robot in her way that is until she notices she's running out of time and should hurry up to finish off as many villain bots as possible in the last few minutes. However her sensitive ears pick up another obstacle to overcome, and she looks in the direction where the zero pointer is coming from her jaw almost drops to the ground. They told the students to just avoid the zero pointer, because beating it scores no points. But how exactly should the teenage girl avoid something that is bigger than an entire building? The huge machine waltzes through the battle center destroying everything in its path Masha instinctively wants to retreat and escape to a district on the other side of the makeshift town. But two manly figures who come running around a corner in a rush interrupt her plans. The two boys one with crimson red hair and one electric blonde are way too close to that Terminator thing damn idiots. Just how did they not notice that? Masha curses and her body starts moving on its own her feline eyes spot an opening between the massive feet of the metal monster. And she basically jumps over the two other teenagers pushing them out of the way into a very small alleyway between the grey square cut buildings landing on top of them herself oh. The young tigress complains blinking down at the two boys beneath her own body. Would you please not scare me to death like that? I thought I'd get a heart attack. They both stare at her with enlarged eyes still dumbfounded, and trying to understand what the hell just had happened the blonde guy with a cool lightning-shaped black strand is the first one to blush us so close. He stutters in a high-pitched tone how cute. Masha giggles at his reaction and moves to get off of the two. She extends both of her hands to help the boys up on their feet as well, and they take her off her sorry bout that the redhead finally finds his voice to speak up to the tiger girl. And thanks of course that was awesome. The blonde dude nods along enthusiastically his eyes, staring at her checking her out all of the students had changed into their casual sports outfits for the practical exam part. And since Masha loves to have a lot of mobility, in order to use her quirk abilities in the best way possible, she only wears black gym shorts and a matching well-covering sports bra she grins at her two fellow students, knowingly oh no problem you two actually have really cool hair. But first we should focus on getting out of here unfortunately, as the two boys start to agree with her, a loud alarm begins to blare and Masha stops her movements, shrugging her shoulders or maybe not. She comments, and the three start laughing you too okay. The young girl asks examining the boys closely. They look somewhat beat up and exhausted. But altogether they're holding up pretty well still in one piece. The blonde crosses his arms behind his head and grins back at her. Yeah think I'm still alive thanks to you. We should definitely go on a date. I'll treat you to a coffee to say thank you properly the red haired besides in deadpans first you should introduce yourself properly bro Masha just smiles at his comment and watches the guy with the spiky crimson red hair point at himself with his thumb names Kirishima Ijiro. Nice to meet ya. The young tigress tries not to laugh at him after this kind of introduction despite his rather wild style. He seems to be the cute type of guy, and really someone she would very much like to hang around with. And I'm Kaminari Denki the blonde adds very pleased to meet you too okay. He is definitely a flirt and Masha can sense a weird kind of desperation behind it. Maybe that dude makes a huge effort to get himself a girlfriend or something. Putting that aside he's nice and friendly not gonna complain about that Masha. The teenage girl answers Shirogawa Masha. But I don't like to be all formal with people around my age so Masha is absolutely fine the three of them slowly walk towards the exit of the large arena. So do you guys dye your hair? 
confused the boys glance at each other, not getting the hint in the girl's earlier remark. Um yup, their black naturally Kirishima, is the first to reply ha. Hey. My strand came with my quirk Kaminari wonders and Masha high fives. The blonde hey mine too we match. Together they get on the bus back to the school's main building. How do you think you did? Masha continues to interview the two boys, and they're both quite confident. But I know if we hadn't have to run from that zero pointer, we would have done even better Kirishima gazes at Masha very seriously. And you could have too with such a cute cinnamon roll, talking to her seriously like that acknowledging her abilities the young girl can't help, but to blush and smile shyly at the red head. The dyed red head nah then I wouldn't have been able to talk to you guys now she says flirting only a little bit making her new friends beam at her. Back at the main entrance, and in her middle school uniform Masha, looks around the rest of the examinees, but is unable to locate Izakion. She starts to wonder if there was a second drop off, or if he had left without her already, so she texts him briefly you two wanna go have some food. I'm starving. The young tigress suggests my treat. I told you Kaminari agrees and Kirishima laughs at his buddy, so you're taking me on a date as well. They all start laughing again and Masha begins to feel very comfortable with these two guys. She just met she would actually want to bring Izuku along. But since there's still no response from the green-haired boy, she shrugs it off and follows the two to a nearby grill restaurant where the boys order a steak and burger. While Masha tries the crispy chicken with fries with brightly shining amber eyes and rosy cheeks, she looks joyfully at her food letting out an overly satisfied sigh as she takes the first bite nigh until the just then she notices her two escorts gazing at her in awe with slightly open mouths and bright red faces Kirishima's face. Matching the crimson color of his hair and eyes embarrassed, she tilts her head and twitches her tiger ears in confusion. Double what? They both snap out of it at the same time shaking their heads in unison. You, a uh, uh, nothing Kirishima scratches the back of his head and concentrates on his own plate W well. I'm glad you like it Kaminari stutters awkwardly and Masha starts to beam again I do. It's great, wanna try? Astonished the blonde stares at her again and the young tigress truly begins to question his behavior why you'll let me. He asks hesitantly honestly just what is their problem? Sure, Masha nods Kirishima you too. As the three teenagers laugh talk and share their food with each other the young girl is very happy that they get along so well, and she's finally able to sense the two boys loosen up a little bit the strange kind of nervousness she could clearly detect from them. At the beginning fades away however she finds out soon enough that Kaminari is kind of fun to tease, as she's able to easily make him flustered with certain words or behavior Kirishima is more relaxed around her, and seems to get used to her playful attitude faster. But even the Crimson Head has his weaknesses when they finally leave the restaurant. It has gotten late already Masha stretches her body. You two sure have some amazing quirks. I'm really impressed, she swoons. I so hope that we've all made it into you together. I'm already looking forward to see you guys again. Would be awesome to be classmates in future too. The boys glance at each other smiling and puffing their chests out a bit. Hey Masha, you see Kirishima starts insecurely. I mean it's already getting dark and stuff so. Yeah he looks at the blonde for support who grins back far too cockily. We'd very much love to escort you home Kaminari finishes. With a very confident tone in his voice, Masha's mischievous cat character makes its move once again. And she smiles innocently at the blonde hum. She hums pretending to think it over and then she asks him. And make sure to sound as suggestive as possible in her sweetest voice Kaminari's confidence is blown away in an instant hh huh. He somehow manages to force out. But it's more of a noise than a properly formed question Masha's smile only widens while watching Kaminari's head explode in a dark red color. His imagination obviously running at full speed you do enjoy this don't ya? Kirishima asks with slightly pink cheeks too but not really feeling uncomfortable. At least he gets the joke I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about Kirishima Masha assures him. While still playing innocent, I just thought we should exchange phone numbers to stay in contact. You know it'll take a while until we receive our results realization strikes the red head ah you do have a point. That's a great idea the electric blonde exhales strongly. S. 
So that's what it was all about not sure if he was relieved or actually disappointed Masha, meets his eyes again. Well what did you have in mind Kaminari? He stiffens once again and begins to panic W what? And me? Oh, uh, you um so. You know I, I, he stammers helplessly struggling to get out of this situation. But Kirishima bursts out in loud laughter. Oh dude he shakes his red-haired head and Masha giggles, along who exactly is enjoying this now huh? She teases let's go you guys this way. The teenage girl starts walking, and the boys follow behind Kirishima patting Kaminari's shoulder sympathetically. While the blondes still frazzled after another bus ride the trio ends up standing in front of the apartment where Masha lives with her mother Kahono wanna come in. The tiger girl asks this time without any hidden intentions my mom's also home she adds after remembering her former teasing sorry. But it's already late enough, and I have a longer way home Kirishima says and Kaminari agrees, yes such a shame. But next time for sure invite us over again okay. Masha only smirks but stays silent for once this guy. He never learns does he? It's going to be fun to mess with him. The three exchange phone numbers as promised thank you very much for the date. It was fun the white and black haired girl smiles honestly at her new friends see you at UA. The two boys nod seriously see you at UA. They reply in unison, it's a promise. For a moment the boys wait until Masha has entered the apartment safely. Then Kaminari collapses to his knees damn, I want to go inside so bad. He admits whiningly and Kirishima's worry for the blonde vanishes at his words. The red-haired chuckles while Kaminari's eyes start to tear she's so gorgeous. The other male extends his hand to help the blonde back on his feet. Yeah she is, but you totally fell for her traps. And you didn't even learn your lesson Kirishima points out oh that's fine, I don't want you think she'll be my girlfriend. The crimson boy restrains his laughter now nah, that'd be an overkill. He states, She's way too much to handle for ya both of them start walking back to the bus stop slowly. The electric blonde lost in his thought underscore 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 one whole week of insufferable waiting passes in slow motion putting Masha on edge. The message from Izakian that he had been injured during the exam did not help her out in this kind of situation at all. But at least he promised her that he had been healed already so the young tigress doesn't have to worry too much except for them both as well as her other two new friends passing the exam. Then one late evening Kahono storms into Masha's room in a hurry almost breaking her door during the process and holding a formal looking letter in her hands. Oh my gosh it's you eh? Kahono yells excitedly and Masha snatches it away from her mom, immediately to open it her hands trembling. As soon as it's open a 3D projection of the number one hero, All Might appears in the room causing Masha and her mother to squeal in surprise. They both look at each other in confusion, I am here. The blonde pro hero exclaims as a projection. Masha facepalms well duh. Kahono snickers at her reaction and continues to watch, I am not just in this city for heroing, I am here to be a teacher at UA. Mr. Projection explains, and the young girl perks up her tiger ears with great interest that's unexpected, but great Izakion's gonna freak out now young Shiragawa, you got 36 villain points in your practical exam. But that's not the only part of our judging process. We had a secret panel of judges watching for additional rescue points, since saving people, even if it interferes with winning, is a big part of being a hero. And you saved not only young Kirishima, but also young Kaminari, which was a heroic act indeed. A video clip plays the scene where Masher rescued the two boys from underneath the zero pointer. Oh, I'm so proud of you, little tigress. Kehono praises her, causing the teenage girl's cheeks to turn pink. This gave you another 40 rescue points, and with 76 points in total. All Might turns slightly looking directly at Masha, and her mother with a short pause, giving a highly dramatic effect, you've earned yourself second place and passed. Welcome to you a high school's hero course young Shiragawa. Congratulations. Masha and her mother hold each other's hands hopping and squealing like little kids. I have to text Izakion. The cat girl shouts excitedly oh and Kirishima and Kaminari too. 
She rushes over to her table to grab her smartphone. Don't forget Namasa and Shota her mom reminds her. But the young tigress waves that aside Uncle Shota already knows mommy. He's a teacher there after all maybe I'll be in his class that'd be awesome. But you're right I'm gonna write Sukachi a short message Masha and Kahono celebrate the young girl's enrollment into UA with a big cup of hot chocolate with whipped cream on top. And some snacks from the kitchen Masha's smartphone rings multiple times announcing text messages from her friends. As she looks at the screen her smile widens. Izuku Kirishima and Kaminari passed the entrance exam. As well all four of them have made it into you a high school together. Kirishima Kaminari Masha calls and waves at the two boys walking ahead of her. They both turn around and smile back at her in recognition. Good morning. The electric blonde widens his smile a bit and gives the cat girl a thumb up we made it. He states proudly and Masha nods along, and you look great in the new uniform. The young tigress furrows her brows and looks down on her you. A uniform consisting of a dark green mini, a short-sleeved white blouse a red necktie, and a light gray blazer with dark green details on its collar and the edges of its long sleeves seriously. I look like a bank clerk. She wrinkles her nose to express her annoyance, and the boys start laughing at her remark. No tiger prints stockings this time. The redhead asks, but Masha only shakes her head. No, not on this one. It's a shame I can't pair it up to match my tiger image. Though since that didn't fit together at all Masha decided, just to go with short white socks and brown somewhat moccasin-like slip-ons very common boring. Together the three of them head for the main entrance and talk about how they celebrated their passing of the exam and how surprised they were to see the teacher's projections and the number one hero being a teacher as well. Hey, you guys I'm supposed to meet up with someone here so just go on ahead without me Masha explains shortly before they're about to enter the building. We're all in one a right. So see you later in class. Then the two boys share a slightly confused glance but shrug it off and leave her behind waving their hands to go to the classroom. Only a few minutes of waiting later Masha spots, a very familiar messy hair, and jumps into the young boy's arms Izakiyo. I'm so 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 happy to see you. And I'm so proud of you. And of course I was also very worried about you. So I'm really glad you're fine. And she stops her overly excited sputtering and backs away from her best friend, sniffing suspiciously. The way she narrows her feline amber eyes at him and stops smiling shows Izuku clearly that something's not right his own bright smile and good mood start to fade Masha. He looks at her with his big green eyes worriedly you've changed. She claims deadly serious and he sweat drops immediately starting to panic on the inside oh, so you know what I'm talking about. The cat girl asks having noticed the anxiety of her friend right away. I can sense some tremendous power coming from you care to explain that to me. You're supposed to be quirk less right. I've never heard of late developing at the age of 15, so what the heck is going on with you? Izuku avoids her strong gaze looking on the floor and starts to stutter his body language clearly tells Masha how uncomfortable he is, and it feels like a sting in her heart Izukyan. The young tigress tries to soften her voice, a little bit you don't trust me. The green-haired boy looks up to her in shock and shakes his head trying to speak up. But Masha interrupts him. Look I told you that I had killed people remember. Is your secret that bad? I mean, we're friends right? So it's only natural for me to worry about you in a situation like this isn't it? You would worry about me too wouldn't you? Izuku's green eyes widen at her emotional outburst. I, it's just... I don't know I mean H how do I explain this? Masha watches her best friend as he struggles and feels bad to put so much pressure on him. I don't want to force you, she tells him honestly, but her tiger ears and tail droop disappointedly oh no. You don't have to worry about me I can promise you that much. I'm completely fine. It's just the teenage boy starts, but pauses again to think it's kind of not my own secret, and I promised not to tell anyone so. I'm very sorry Masha, this really has nothing to do with our friendship. But I want to keep my promise surprised Masha notices that she's never seen her childhood friend that serious she sighs okay. So just to sum this up. You had no quirk until recently. 
But now you got one how or why you got it is a secret. And you share that secret with someone who doesn't want you to tell anyone else got that right. Izakion nods hesitantly. Is that person trustworthy? Are you sure this person is not using you for own selfish purposes? The serious expression in his face doesn't shift as he looks up to his best friend. I trust this person with my life. And I am very grateful the green-haired boy responds. And I'm also grateful to you Masha. I know you're only pushing me because you truly care for me. And you're right, I would do the same he smiles at her again. And she smiles back sorry about that Izakion only one last thing. Please tell me, it's not that Kakan guy, the young Midoriya snickers. No, he's not promised. Finally, Masha exhales relieved fine. I can live with that her friend blinks at her. Are really? You're not angry. She shakes her head a bit disappointed, because we never had any secrets, and I kinda feel left out on this one, and also a bit anxious, because if I don't know anything I won't be able to help you if you need me. But I trust you we're not kids anymore, I know you can handle things on your own. I'm not your babysitter besides you actually have that other person whom you can talk to so you're not completely alone with this. But I also want you to know that you can always rely on me. I'll be there for you. Even if you can't tell me everything Izuku's eyes start to fill up with tears Masha thank you. I'm sorry. I really am. He whines with strong emotions in his trembling voice. The tiger girl hugs him tightly idiot. Don't cry I'll be teary too. She mumbles at his shoulder. But you know that Kaken will be a problem right? I mean he knows that you were quirk less. So he will notice that something suspicious about it right away. All the others won't be much of an issue. They'll just think you're born with it naturally. But that guy bullied you your whole life. He's definitely gonna freak out Izakion tries to show her an awkward smile. But rather grimaces at her, so he actually knows I it'll be alright. He stammers probably. Probably? Not convincing at all. But Masha keeps her mouth shut after talking so much they've wasted enough time. So they're quite late for class now, and that on their first day. The two childhood friends hurry inside the building and follow the signs to find class 1 can you tell me what kind of quirk you got now? Masha asks curiously while walking down the hallway a power type 1 the green-haired boy answers and sounds a little bit proud. But my control is kind of bad. I break my bones using it Masha stops in shock and stares at him dumbfounded dubby what? Talking so casually about it what the heck is wrong with that guy? Has he exchanged his brain for that damn quirk? You just told me I don't have to worry. Is that what happened during the entrance exam? Izuku waves both of his hands, trying to appease her. It's fine, it's fine, recovery girl treated me. There's no problem the young tigress just can't believe her ears. As the two of them finally arrive at their classroom, she starts to scold the green-haired boy. Angrily listen up there, Izakiyan. That you got treated is absolutely not the point here. But soon enough they get interrupted by a certain girl their age with shoulder length brown hair big eyes and rosy cheeks running up to the same place catching the attention of the friends and also the weird stiff glasses boy who had yelled at them in the auditorium hey. I recognize that messed up hair the brown haired girl beams with a bright adorable smile. Falling boy. Masha starts to chuckle under her breath amused about the unique nickname and about the fact that Izuku stiffens right next to her his face turning increasingly red the more the cute girl talks to him her mischievous cat character begins to ship the two adorable cutie pies instantly and matchmaking plans cross her mind while watching her stammering buddy gosh he's so bad with girls. That's gonna be a tough job if you're just going to be wasting time. Then you can pack up your stuff and leave a voice suddenly calls from behind them. Masher recognizes the monotonous bored to death tone at once and turns around together with her classmates to greet its owner happily. She had hoped to be in his class since she got the message that she had passed the exam after all. But at the sight of the dude in a yellow sleeping bag her facial expression goes to pieces ugh. Uncle Shoda, what do you think you're doing? Aren't you ashamed at all? Just look at that ridiculous appearance. The other students around her including Izuku stare at her, as if she lost her mind to tell off a teacher of you, a so disrespectfully, but the black-haired guy only shoots the young tigress, a glance watch your attitude, we're not in private here, you'll get no special treatment, he informs her calmly. That's my line. 
I'm not the one coming to classes in a sleeping bag, so what kind of attitude is that? The teenage girl mumbles quietly, but sits down anyway. Welcome to UAS Hero Course. The teacher continues unimpressed with the same lame sound in his voice. It took eight seconds for all of you to shut up. That's not gonna work time is precious rational students would understand that much the sleeping bag slowly slides off the black-dressed man with tired eyes, unshaved face, and messy shoulder-length hair. His gray scarf is wrapped around his shoulders multiple times and yellow goggles hang down from his neck hello. I'm Aizawa Shota your teacher. The whole class gasps, collectively thinking this is going to be a rough year. Only Masha seems to truly appreciate the choice of their homeroom teacher. Without further ado, Mr. Aizawa pulls out some royal blue athletic clothes and orders his students to put them on seriously first a bank clerk, and now the Navy. Or rather the Marines. As the whole class starts to run towards the locker room, Izuku's lost in his own thoughts. Muttering about which pro hero their teacher could be Masha notices, she hasn't told him Uncle Shota's hero name yet and wonders if she should enlighten her childhood friend. But the current situation leaves her no time, so the cat girl changes with the other girls and follows them to the outside training courts behind the building where they would be taking a so-called quirk apprehension test. But what about the orientation? We're going to miss it the cute brown-haired girl from earlier protests. If you really want to make the big leagues you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies. Mr. Aizawa shoots back here at UA. We aren't tethered to tradition that means I get to run my class whichever way I see fit Masher rolls her amber eyes at this comment. Yeah yeah selfish as always you've been taking standardized tests your whole lives. But you haven't been able to use your quirks the black haired explains and shows the tests the class will be taking on his phone. Then he turns to a very familiar spiky haired blonde. It's really not fair how hot he looks despite his rotten personality. Masha glares at him back Hugo. You scored the most points in the entrance exam. What was your farthest softball throw in middle school? The young tigress twitches her ears so Kaken is actually Bakugo Katsuki, who placed first in the exam with 77 villain points. But no rescue points at all, she snorts just why isn't she surprised. Fits his character with her own 76 points that are well balanced and got herself second place with only one point difference to him the teenage girls. Not really impressed or so she thinks until Blondie starts talking 67 meters. I think he answers Mr. Aizawa's question and his dark and slightly raspy voice sends a shiver down her spine oh no. For crying out loud why him? Masha never fell for any hot looking dudes up until now so why the hell does it have to be Mr. I like bullying your best friend. Because he's strong dangerous and sexy okay. That's not helping not at all. Okay now try with your quirk anything goes just stay in the circle their teacher instructs Bakugo. And he walks into said circle stretching his arms, you figured out which pro hero he is. Masha whispers to her green-haired friend standing right next to her to shift her attention away from very delicious, looking muscles to something that would not affect her mental health in a critical way Izuku shakes his head slightly. But I was surprised that our teacher is actually the hero who saved you back then that's so cool. And he's your godfather too. I just can't believe how lucky we are to be in his class. But he seems very strict from what you always tell me. I had a completely different image. The young girl chuckles he just loves to play the bad guy want me to tell you his hero name now. But Izuki smiles confidently nope, I'll figure out myself. Just at that moment the black-haired teacher turns around to give the two friends a dead-like glare and they shut up instantly all of you need to know your maximum capability. The whole class watches in awe as light blonde Bakugo blasts the ball far into the sky with his explosion quirk. Mr. Aizawa shows them the result on his phone. It reads 705 wow. What a show off. And no that's not hot at all. As some of Masha's new classmates start to cheer about being able to use their quirks as much as they want their teacher smiles creepily at them. So this looks like fun, huh? For the next three years here to become pro heroes, you think it's all gonna be playtime? He asks calling for their attention again, idiots. Today you'll compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. The person who comes in last will be expelled immediately the teenage girl lets out an annoyed groan. There he goes again. 
A little less drama would be appropriate. But the others all gasp in panic, and the cat girl can't believe they actually bought that crap. Maybe she should say something. Especially to Izakyun whose pulse quickens increasingly. But as she still thinks about approaching him to calm her friend down the first test begins, and the students scatter to prepare for the short distance, running with her enhanced physical abilities, and her training experience of course Masha's, doing much better than average in every test getting relatively high results. But she notices soon enough that Izakyun's scoring low. Weird with all that power worriedly, she watches him, as it is his turn for the softball throw, with a serious expression on his face. The greenish dark-haired boy throws, with all his might however being visibly confused by the bad result. The young tigress glances at Mr. Aizawa, who's now focused on her friend with red eyes and his black hair, and the grey scarf raising up from his body, creating a threatening aura around him. I erased your quirk the teacher informs his student monotonously. As always the judges for this exam, were not rational enough someone like you should never be allowed to enroll at this school. The white and black-haired girl narrows her feline amber eyes at the tired-looking guy how dare he talks like that. Wait you did what to my? Izakion starts, and his green eyes widen in recognition. Ah those goggles. I know you. You can look at someone and cancel out their powers. The eraser hero eraser head. Her other classmates immediately begin to discuss about whether they have heard of a hero with that name or not but Masha only smiles proudly you're not ready you don't have control over your power. The pro hero continues his ranting without a response were you planning to break your bones again, counting on someone else to save your useless body. He uses his capture weapon scarf to grab the green-haired boy and brings him close only to let him go after a short moment again, letting him try again. This time the young Midoriya looks determined ready to show his fighting spirit to everyone I wonder. If our teacher gave him some advice yelling glasses boy says to no one in particular, he probably told this quirk less loser to start packing Bakugo scoffs, taxing Masha's waning patience. That quirk less loser is gonna be a better hero than an arrogant little poser like you. Especially with your completely non-heroic attitude. She claims deadly serious with a sharp glare at the blonde boy for a second. He is so astonished that someone actually has the guts to dare talk to him like this that he stiffens. But it doesn't last very long dare to repeat that, and I'm gonna murder you. He erupts with flaring red eyes trying to stare the cat girl down Masha, just can't help. But to growl and lock her amber eyes with his taking on his challenge. Yeah because hurting people who seem useless to you is actually all you can do right. This time the spiky-haired boy is totally taken aback with her comment. She was clearly referring to Izuku, and he seems to understand that much. But since Bakugo doesn't know Masha, and has never met her before he's not able to see the connection with a mocking grin. The tiger girl turns around to watch her friend again, who's about to throw the ball just you watch him. And with that said Izuku shoots the softball far off into the sky, using only one finger but concentrating sheer force and power on that little point, leaving everyone watching simply speechless everyone but Masha the young girl shows Bakugo a triumphant smile see. Told you so. Also the green-haired boy turns towards the class again facing their teacher, who had previously doubted him straightly. You see he declares proudly I'm still standing. But nevertheless the arm he's gripping leads down to the most broken-looking finger the young tigress has ever seen. So that's what he meant when he told her he had no control and was breaking his bones Masha grits her teeth. Why is it that he always has to be hurt in some way? He finally got a quirk and an even greater chance to fulfill his dream, so why does it have to turn out like this? With broken bones and pain? Hasn't he already suffered enough up until now? Deku you damn idiot. Tell me how you did that or you're dead. Bakugo screams and starts to run in Izuku's direction, only to get caught in Mr. Aizawa's scarf easily containing him. How's your scarf so strong? The blonde questions because it's a capture weapon made out of a special carbon fiber and a special metal alloy. The teacher actually answers flatly stand down. He commands with finality in his words, it would be wise to avoid making me use my quirk, so much it gives me a serious dry. I well that explains the dark circles around his eyes, not so much the floating hair and scarf and the bad mood, but yeah the eyes. 
Such a shame that power is amazing the whole class says collectively. While Masha just snickers about this synchronized reaction when her gaze lands on Bakugo again, the blonde teenager still stands on his spot, where he was caught staring on the ground angrily and completely ignoring Izuku, she notices a desperate fire in his red eyes that honestly surprises her. So it's not only winning on his mind, after all his body language clearly radiates insecurity and frustration, but also anger and aggression. Now you're wasting my time there teacher complains Shiragawa you're up since you came in second at the entrance exam. With only one point difference to the first place, show us what you've got at this casual remark Bakugo's head jerks up only to glower at the tiger girl with his lips pressed together and clenched fists. Oops. She ignores his flashing red eyes on her and steps into the ring to throw the softball Izakion and the hot head both scored 705 meters with quite amazing quirks. But Masha already knows her best record from the regular training at the institute, and since this is only a sports lesson she has some more tests to take, and she has absolutely no reason to show off or any intention to compete with anyone over something so stupid the white and black-haired girl decides to be the adult here, and not to go all out without extending her fangs and claws. And without letting her black tiger stripes cover her cheeks and arms Masha grips the ball tightly strikes out as far as possible and activates her enhanced tiger strength without changing her shape to throw it an airstream lets her hair and the fabric of her sports suit swirl up and the softball soars into the sky. The score is more than respectable with 601 meters, even if she didn't make a big effort to come at least close to her personal weight of 712. Aizawa nor Bakugo look very pleased her teacher raises an eyebrow knowingly that all. He provokes Masha on purpose, but she shrugs it off, I'm saving my energy, because I know I have more tests to take after this one. She answers calmly, that's what you're actually trying to teach us right. The responsible use of our quirks, and to understand the limits of our powers, very well aware, that Uncle Shota couldn't argue much with that. Even though he knows for sure that she's capable to do a lot more than that the cat girl leaves him behind to deal with the rest of her classmates. TCH the blonde boy with spiky hair turns his head away from her sneeringly obviously more than just a little dissatisfied with her explanation Masha just rolls her eyes male drama queen. After making sure Izakian is alright despite a broken finger, and after comforting him the young tigress moves on to the next test. Which is doing sit-ups there, she finds a very familiar-looking red head with hair that is spiked in many different directions. Hey Kirishima, let's be sit-up partners. Masha calls out to him from behind, and he turns to her with a cute smile, where's Kaminari? They both look around and spot the electric blonde almost at the very back of the line. Looking like he wants to be somewhere else, the cat girl giggles at his unhappy face. Your throw was damn cool. Kirishima exclaims did you really hold back? Masha rubs the back of her head sheepishly well. I'm not that competitive you know soon enough all tests are over, and the whole class gathers to wait for their results. Being announced I've ranked you all from best to worst you should probably have a good idea of your standing already the black-haired teacher explains. I'll simply show you the whole list. It's not worth it to go over everyone's individual scores. A blue projection of the ranking appears in mid-air and Masha scans it briefly recognizing her name on place 4 right after Bakugo Katsuki. Again, she sighs and searches for Izuku, only to find out he's dead last. She glances at him and sees that his face has gone pale white. Just then she remembers that he's most likely worried to death because he still thinks he'll have to leave UA. For good as she attempts to speak up to him the young girl gets interrupted again. And I was lying no one's going home today Mr. Aizawa finally clarifies that was just a rational deception to make sure you gave it your all in the tests. His creepy smile curls up his mouth again and a collective sigh rolls through class. One a especially a green-haired boy looks like fainting at every moment yet yeah, no shit Sherlock. Masha crosses her arms over her chest and grimaces in annoyance why you knew. Izuki unwinds besides her making her feel guilty right away. Ah oh, sorry Izuki un kinda missed my chance to talk to you earlier. Another beautiful girl with black hair in a high ponytail. And dark eyes also seems to be a bit uncomfortable. I'm surprised the rest of you didn't figure that out. I'm very sorry I guess I should have said something. No honestly Masha's just glad that there's at least one person with a functional brain around in this class. 
That's it we're done for the day, the tired dude announces while turning around to leave pick up a syllabus in the classroom and read it over before tomorrow morning without looking back at his class he hands over a paper to the young Midoriya boy to send him to the infirmary and walks away. When Masha finally leaves the big school building behind, she spots her best friend with the cute brown-haired girl and the tall yelling guy with glasses. As the girl goes on talking to the messy-haired boy, he ends up blushing profoundly again, and the cat girl smirks hey Izakyun. She greets him lightheartedly, and he smiles back at her also looking a bit relieved to be saved by her from an even more embarrassing situation. Hello you two I'm Masha Shiragawa Masha, but please just call me Masha nice to meet ya the big adorable doe eyes of the girl begin to sparkle Yuraraka Ochako she answers happily. You can call me Ochako too, if you want wow your cat ears are so cute, I love them. The young tigress blushes but feels warm and comfy inside with Ochako instantly. As the two girls exchange bright smiles my name is Ida Tenya Glasses Boy, also introduces himself giving Masha a stiff and polite bow very pleased to meet you as well slightly surprised the teenage girl blinks at such good manners of a fellow student oh um, no need to be so formal with me since we're classmates let's just be friends and get along okay. Luckily the awkward atmosphere clears in the next minutes. As the four of them start talking about Ochako's and Ida's quirks, which are controlling the gravity of living beings, as well as non-living things and Ida, having some very cool engines on his legs that can make him run with super speed and enhance the power of his kicks Whoa, Ochako. If you just could stop throwing up, you would actually be able to fly that'd be amazing. The group starts laughing together, and they finally leave the school grounds not parting ways until it's necessary for them. In order to head towards the directions of their separate homes in the morning Masha, has to endure regular classes math, English, science, and history. Bored to death, she sits in the classroom and yawns for the umpteenth time. And what's even worse, she glances to her side to look at Bakugo, who's sitting right next to her, what are you looking at damn cat? He mocks noticing her glimpse the white and black-haired girl turns to him slightly and shows him her mischievous cat-like grin. Oh well nothing much I suppose she counters calmly meaning every word she just said quite literally. I swear I'm gonna kill you. The blonde explodes immediately so he got the hint unfortunately their teacher interrupts them entering the classroom so Bakugo slumps down on his chair again, gritting his teeth at least he's wide awake now unlike Masha who barely bears up until lunch break in the cafeteria. She waves enthusiastically at Izakiyono Chako and glasses Ida who sit all together but ends up meeting Kirishima and Kaminari while lining up to get herself some food and being dragged along by the boys to another table where two other dudes are waiting for them one of them has black hair and kinda weird elbows which is probably because of his quirk and the other one is very small and has purple balls on his head which could actually be a quirk as well or just a strange hairstyle. The electric blonde is nice enough to introduce Masha to the black-haired Siro Hanta and the little Maita Minoru from whom she can sense quite a hormone flash, as he looks up to her starting to drool. Nevertheless her playful cat side can't help. But to think the tiny boy's super cute like a cat toy oh my gosh you're so damn cute. Can I hug you please? She blurts out exhilarated leaving all four guys gazing at her flabbergasted especially mine to himself, looks like his brain has just decided to quit the service. His jaw has dropped to the floor his enlarged eyes seem like they're about to bounce out of his head and his whole body is shaking violently Masha backs off a bit Ah Kaminari seems like I've just quick frozen your friend sorry. And then the purple-haired boy literally starts to cry his eyes out sobbing loudly the young tigress begins to panic oh no. I didn't mean to hurt you I'm sorry I really am so sorry. Please don't cry. I won't touch you I promised. With flattened ears Masha tries her best to soothe the boy who's drenched in tears don't promise me something horrific like that after raising my hopes like crazy. Minta suddenly screams with tears still flowing down his face. Never before in my life has a girl with such a magnificently built body bestowed the great honor upon me to call me cute, let alone wanting to embrace me. I am beyond overjoyed right now so please go ahead as much as you want. Do not bother to hold back. I'm all yours, for all eternity. Before the purple head has the opportunity to continue with his hysterical outburst, shouting through the whole cafeteria, 
A long pink tongue smacks into his face, shutting him up. Eh? Masha blinks her mind has gone blank what the hell. This boy is a perf. You should be careful around him a cute frog-like girl, who's the owner of the weapon tongue informs her with a ribbit huh? Masha blinks again, and while the cat girl's still speechless, which is a very rare occasion Kirishima Siro and Kaminari burst out into laughter, holding their stomachs Oi Masha you're awesome. The red-haired states and Kaminari nods along that was so hilarious. Minta only breathes heavily after being so close to suffocation eh? But I was actually serious the teenage girl pouts playfully winking at Kaminari. Now that she has noticed in which direction the intentions of the ball-headed guy really lead her sneaky smirk returns to her face. He's so tiny he could easily be my toy. She says that with a slight sing-song to her tone minter, restarts to tremble besides her TT toy. He aspirates hey, I can be your toy too. The electric blonde winks right back at her participating in her little game Masha Snickers, while Siro and Kirishima share a short glance and lower their heads, suppressing their smiles and looking at their food instead nah you're too tall. That won't work I can't pick you up properly. The young girl responds lightheartedly and rests her chin in the palm of her hand. You know like a pet or something the purple-haired boy almost stops breathing having turned into a stone statue pp pickup. P pet? He forces out why you sure are into some advanced stuff. Now Masha honestly has problems to stifle her laughter pfft. She hears Kaminari at the same time, but Minta doesn't even seem to notice. Or to care well, I am a cat the young tigress clarifies, she puts one hand on the table, and shows the boys how long and sharp tiger claws grow from her fingers glistening in the artificial light of the school's canteen. All four of them watch the process astonished. She locks her amber eyes with Minta's again, as they widen more and more at her performance. I like to play it rough Tilda. She finally blows him the last strike causing the poor little boy to explode in a heavy nosebleed the group starts laughing together again geez. Kirishima exclaims I'm glad I'm not your target Masha smiles sweetly at him who says you're not. You're kinda cute as well. But the crimson head only grins back thanks I'm taking this as a compliment Masha giggles it is. She assures him after wiping away some tears of laughter Kaminari. Shows the cat girl a smug grin you can take me on next. I'm already used to it after all she raises her brows and his red-haired friend next to him starts coughing getting sassy are we? The tone in her voice turns low him so full of confidence again. Still haven't learned your lesson have ya? She begins to tease the blonde after the last time you're actually the last one who should dare to challenge me like that Kaminari. Or could it be you've enjoyed it so much that you can't get enough of me now? At the electric blonde's dumbfounded reddened face Kirishima, besides him almost spits out his coke again, dude you're so screwed. In all that chaos Siro seems to be quite amused and interested, rather than to be wondering about how weird his classmates really are getting to know you certainly means it'll never be boring huh? That's kinda nice the black-haired tells Masha with a wide grin, and the young girl chuckles about such a matter-of-fact statement oh I'm very pleased to meet you too, she answers him genuinely. Hi, I'm Masha, and I like to mess with people Siro nods trying to look serious. Yeah, I can see that with Minta completely knocked out the group goes on to chit-chat, while eating their lunch together and Masha finally gets her chance to ask Siro about his elbow quirk, which she learns is cellophane tape. Whoa that's just perfect for capturing villains cool. She cheers causing the black haired to be the next one to blush a bit, but with a proud and happy smile on his face. After lunch break the first time of true hero training, has finally come I am here. A very familiar voice booms coming through the door like a hero. Masha facepalms again does he know that he's actually implying that entering a room through a door like every ordinary sane human being would do is a heroic act. The cat girl seriously considers taking the window next time, only to see his reaction of course. She's nevertheless very excited about the mighty number one hero being their teacher. The whole class starts cheering, as the huge blonde pro-hero enters the classroom with his bright characteristic smile welcome to the most important class at Yua High. Think of it as heroing 101 here, you will learn the basics of being a pro, and what it means to fight in the name of good, let's get into it. 
All Might explains with his hands on his hips today's lesson, will pull no punches. He continues holding up a note card with big block letters battle it reads, but Masha's way too distracted to recognize all that in sheer horror, she stares at the smiling hero with golden hair. Her face grows pale, and her amber eyes widen in realization. All Might is sick like critically ill. The symbol of peace that keeps the world together is dying fading away very slowly right in front of her eyes for Masha. It feels like watching someone bleed to death drip by drip his enormous powers seem to leak from his muscular body from second to second of course the bulky hero still is the most powerful being Masha has ever seen or sensed. But that doesn't change the fact that it's only a matter of time that his era will come to an end very soon. The tiger girl faintly notices how Bakugo is excited about real combat training, and how All Might and her other classmates continue to talk about their assignment, and about looking good as a hero in their costumes, which are ready now but her mind has already gone blank what will Izakion say. Did he notice? He'll definitely be shocked to the core. The teenage girl glimpses at her childhood friend as another strike of awareness hits her same. Her inner tigress tells her without doubt. Izuku and All Might are the same she doesn't want to believe it how. How are they the same? How can this be? Masha knows that her instincts never betray her, but she's so deeply shaken and confused that she can't trust her own senses. Right now young Shiragawa, All Might's deep voice rings in her sensitive ears, and she jumps from her chair standing abruptly only to recognize that she's the only student left in the classroom is something the matter. Masha hesitates for a second, but that short moment is enough for the blonde pro hero to notice the tears and the desperation in the young girl's strong amber gaze why yes sir, she begins to stutter and avoids his eyes looking at her desk instead please forgive me my rudeness in your classes, but I'm actually um feeling very unwell right now, would you please be so kind and grant me permission to go to the infirmary. The white and black-haired girl bows politely after her request catching her teacher by surprise. After a minute of thinking the bright smile reappears on All Might's angular face. No need to apologize he assures her friendly the health of our students is always our top priority. The pro hero signs a document and hands it over to the cat girl who accepts it with slightly trembling hands, still trying not to look at him directly thank you very much I. I really am sorry she mumbles with a weak voice. No sweat young Shiragawa All Might says well, I will have to go to ground beta now. But I'll make sure to come and check on you as soon as classes are over Masha's head jerks up oh oh don't bother. But All Might bursts out in loud laughter. It doesn't bother me at all to care for my beloved students. Whenever they are in need, he explains with total conviction as he exits the classroom J. The young tigress grimaces and sticks her tongue out beloved student my foot. Nevertheless, she leaves the classroom as well and drags herself down the hallway to the infirmary. Oh my young missy, you look pale like a ghost have a seat recovery girl declares looking at Masha's face worriedly and taking the documents signed by All Might you don't have any serious physical issues. The small elderly woman with a grey hair bun on her head says after a close medical examination however, if you still feel sickish you may rest here for a while a nap sometimes works wonders Masha nods along gladly accepting the offer and bowing her head in respect thank you very much the school nurse smiles at her pulls a curtain in front of Masha's bed and leaves her alone in this room with her own thoughts. She sighs and lies down on the bed with the white blankets at least the feeling of shock and maybe having to throw up at any moment have vanished only the circling thoughts in her head still remain and worry tugs on her heart her recent awareness that the number one hero's mighty power has begun to decrease significantly enough for her to sense it with her tiger instincts is certainly not a very good piece of news not for herself and not for the rest of the world of course this doesn't seem to be official so her noticing it wasn't intended and could be a problem besides no one else should be able to notice as long as their quirks won't allow it. The importance of keeping a crucial secret like that from the public, and also from the students is obvious. But do the teachers know? Maybe some of them and Izuku. What kind of weird, uneasy feeling was that earlier? Masha's senses showed her that All Might and her childhood friend are the same she could clearly smell a very similar scent from both of them, even though they're not father and son. 
not related by blood in another way, and Izakyun is obviously not living with the blonde pro hero, so it doesn't make any sense. Also their shiningly bright and kind-hearted auras kind of radiate the same vibes, but what's most bewildering is the fact that their power levels looked comparable, and that's nonsense. No one's power could possibly be comparable to All Might's not to mention that the green-haired boy had been quirkless, and no matter which quirk he got before the entrance exam, it could never be Masha gasps. The secret. And this ominous other person, he shares that secret with. Right before the entrance exam, there had been this incident with Bakugo Izakyun, and this sludge villain, and All Might had appeared out of nowhere to solve the case. Then her childhood friend had made it into Yua with her. But at that time he already had changed and Masha had been able to detect an incredible power from him Izakyun had told her that his new quirk is a power type 1, but also that his control is bad, and that he breaks his bones so his body isn't able to keep up with the quirk power. And on top of that, there is someone who doesn't want Izuku to tell other people about his quirk, and how or why he got it, while All Might's strength is dropping little by little, without being noticed by others quirk less Izakyun, has gained an overflowing amount of energy that puts a heavy strain on his own body. So could it be by any chance? One of them weakening the other one developing powers that are almost equal way too much to be a coincidence. I trust this person with my life. And I am very grateful. Damn Izakyun. Masha whines I know you wanted to be the number one hero like All Might one day. But did you really need to take it this literally? Tears of concern for both of them, the pro hero, and her best friend start to flow down her face. How the heck would she be able to help them? Keeping their secret goes without saying of course, but what else? As she keeps thinking and worrying like that Masha's consciousness begins to fade away until she finally falls asleep however her sweet slumber gets interrupted quite violently as someone pulls the curtain that disguises the bed away in one fell swoop squealing in surprise. The young tigress is wide awake and blinks at the light blonde spiky-haired Bakugo who scowls down on her with his red eyes. He seems to be equally puzzled to see her here, as well as he seems to be beat up and utterly pissed off Bakugo. Masha exclaims and jumps off the bed to push him down on it, so he can have a seat. What the hell happened? You okay? Well I think since you've come to the infirmary, you're certainly not okay just wait a sec. I'm gonna go call recovery girl to treat you with that said the teenage girl runs out of the room to call the school nurse, leaving behind a slightly confused Bakugo, who stares after her questioning her nice attitude towards him all of a sudden. He makes a huge effort to get that picture of her lying on that bed right in front of him out of his mind. What a shock to look in her big amber eyes so unexpectedly, and he made her squeal like a little girly. How the hell would he be able to ever forget that? Returning together with the small elderly woman Masha decides to wait outside of the room. The treatment doesn't take much time, and soon enough the light blonde boy takes his leave again. He glares at the cat girl leaning against the wall next to the door. He just came through how the hell do you know that damn Deku nerd? He strongly demands an explanation from her. She shrugs actually surprised. He even cares we met at the age of five. We've been friends since that time. Although I didn't attend the same middle school like you guys. But we always stayed in contact his eyes widen a bit at her response. But his facial expression remains grim. So you know that he used to be that quirk-less little loser. Why weren't you surprised when he threw that damn softball and broke his finger? Bakugo clenches his fists. His usually red eyes looking even darker now Masha sighs. First of all, he's never been a loser quirk-less or not. And I'm pretty sure that you actually know that very well so don't make me tell you the obvious for God's sake. She counters irritated besides that I have the instincts of a tiger, which surpass average human ones, so I'm able to sense stuff like that. And almost everyone had actually heard about him crushing the zero pointer during the entrance exam. So the only thing I was surprised about was seeing him in action for the first time myself. The spiky haired boy grits his teeth, his anger increases, even more as the two of them talk to each other in the hallway. So where the hell does that stupid quirk come from all of a sudden got him it? He shouts and continues cursing Izakion in several ways. The cat girl rolls her amber eyes at the aggressive outburst who knows. My quirk's not clairvoyance, 
And to be honest, I couldn't even care less I believed in Izakion before he had that quirk. And I'll continue believing in him until the very end. Cause we're friends and I love him. And at least, I'm not such a coward that I'm not able to admit that openly she explains the light blonde almost sluggishly still leaning against the wall. Maybe he just late developed, because a small child would have died holding that power he's 15 now. And he still breaks his bones right. So even his built-up body can't keep up properly simply the word coward seems to be enough to drive back you go up the wall his red eyes are blazing with rage. How do you just call me damn cat? He yells. And the young tigress exhales slowly. What an idiot. Who the hell talked about you Mr. Wannabe Alpha Male? You're not that interesting. She shoots back at him still being calm on the outside, but suppressing an amused grin drop dead. Bakugo fumes and stomps away without looking back at her. Masha chuckles as she watches his back his shoulders being obviously tense shortly after Bakugo's arrival at the infirmary. Also Izakion is brought there with a completely broken arm. The young girl winces at the sight and stays by her friend's side until All Might enters the room to check on him as well. She leaves the two of them alone and waits outside again. Having a deja vu a few minutes later, a bandaged Izaku steps out into the hallway and Masha hugs him very carefully you okay? He nods and smiles at her. How about you? Do you feel better? We heard that you were feeling sick the young girl waves one of her hands. I'm fine I'm fine no worries she smiles right back at the young Midoriya oh. I'm glad he responds such a shame you missed our first hero training. I wish I could have seen you fight. I'll tell you everything later All Might said that he wants to talk to you first. So I'll go to the classroom and meet up with the others Masha agrees with the green haired teen to catch up with him later. After she's talked to the blonde pro hero Masha tries to prepare mentally before facing her teacher again. It would be strange for her to react with staring at him all the time with an expression that clearly signals that something's not right so she inhales deeply puts a friendly little smile on her face and then enters the room again sir you wanted to speak with me. All Might awaits her already standing there in a heroic pose as always ah there you are young Shiragawa. I am certainly relieved to see that you are back on your feet and energetic again. The young tigress mumbles her thanks and tries to apologize again for suddenly spacing out in the classroom earlier. But she doesn't get the chance I think I'm the one who should be apologizing to you. Her teacher says suddenly being very serious Masha twitches her ears in disbelief. Why would the number one hero go to the trouble to apologize to her? According to the expression on your face, after seeing me for your first time, and after I've closely checked on your school file with your personal information again, I suppose you might have sensed something very unpleasant from me with your quirk's power am I right? Feeling somehow caught the teenage girl looks at the floor, that must have been scaring you. I'm very sorry that I didn't check my students' quirks more carefully before entering a class. I should have taken into consideration that someone would be able to see through things like physical conditions, an awkward silence develops between the two and the white and black-haired girl decides to be honest. I've not only sensed something from you sir, but also from Izakiu. I mean Midoriya Izaku, we are childhood friends since the age of five years, and I know that he used to be quirkless. But now I can clearly feel a huge amount of energy coming from his body, and it radiates exactly the same aura as your power does even if it has begun to decrease all might size and nods understandingly smoke starts to rise from his body. And with a slight puff, the bulky guy who's usually big as a truck shrinks down to a very skinny and unhealthy looking blonde dude Masha flinches one of her hands covering her mouth. What you can see here is my true form right now the skeletal man announces and sits himself down on the bed. I can only maintain my muscle form a few hours a day. But up until now very few people are aware of my situation Masha forces herself to breathe. I will not ask for an explanation sir the young girl assures the pro hero. But he shakes his head. No this is my responsibility after you've found out so much on your own and have gone through such a heavy emotional reaction. It's my duty to not leave you behind with frightening half-truths. That might be even worse than explaining myself to you. Hesitantly, the cat girl walks over to the bed and sits. Beside All Might the number one hero begins to tell her an unbelievable story about his quirk called One for All, and how he has passed it down to former quirk Les Izakion Masha exhales slowly. So this is why he didn't want to tell me his secret so desperately. 
It actually does make so much sense now tears start to fill up her feline eyes again. Will he end up like you did? She asks with a trembling voice. I mean I know that being a pro hero puts a great strain on your body and that there's always the danger of permanent damage when you have to fight villains. But this is already breaking his bones. He just got the quirk. But it has hurt him so much in such a short time. I don't want to see him all worn out and suffering I... I mean I don't want to see you like that either, but unfortunately, it's already too late for you. So I really don't want to lose my best friend. He's the only friend I've ever had. All Might watches Masha wiping her tears with a very soft and moved expression on his face young Shirigawa. I am truly grateful that young Midoriya has a wonderful friend like you. I promise you that I will give my best to be his teacher and his guide until the very end. Once he gains a better control over one for all he will be able to use it without hurting himself. But this will also take some time, so I have to ask for your patience. And for your support, do you think you will be able to stand it a little bit longer? The young tigress smiles at the blonde pro hero. She had always admired him, not for his strength like most of his other fans, but for his kind heart for his friendly smile and his encouraging words for Masha. The number one hero had always been the brightest, but also the warmest light to shine down on human society. I'm a terrible friend, she admits. It's his biggest dream to be the number one hero like you. So I should be happy and cheering for him that he's a step closer to this dream. Now, but I'm scared and full of doubt instead. I should believe in him more All Might smiles right back at her. Although in his skeleton form, it looks a bit weird and pats her shoulder. You'll make a splendid hero in future and an even better best friend for young Midoriya, where have you met him? Without thinking twice the teenage girl starts talking. After the secret the pro hero just shared with her, she feels like making it up to him with her own life story to her big surprise, and also to all mites they notice that they share another good friend, except Midoriya, so you are Aisawa's goddaughter. He never told me the number one hero pouts, and it's even more surprising to me that you know Tsukachi. He's an old friend of mine, and he knows about one for all too honestly what are they thinking. I feel completely left out on your case, maybe I could have been of any service back. Then Masha giggles amused about the fact that a grown-up man like him sulks like a little child. I've never seen myself as a hero, but both of them kept pestering me about enrolling into you and along with my mom. So here I am the blonde laughs and stands up from the bed well. I'm glad they did he says, and the cat girl jumps down the bed as well to hug her teacher tightly must have been tough for you too to shoulder this entire burden by yourself over so many years. So who comforts the hero if he's feeling down sometimes? Maybe I'm able to do at least that much for Izakion. And if you'd like for you as well all might with turning back into his muscle form the number one hero tries to hide how much all of this has touched his heart. He ruffles Masha's hair affectionately and leaves her behind in the infirmary. The school's main entrance is surrounded by reporters, photographers, and film teams with cameras and big vans Masha sighs visibly annoyed her classmates are already being interrogated. And she only prays that she'll have the patience to ignore the noisy woman, asking her questions so early in the morning. Just then Bakugo shows up walking besides her. But he doesn't even look at the cat girl. He still seems to be mad about his loss against Izakion during the hero training the day before and about the fact that the green-haired boy even has a quirk Masha only takes a short glimpse at him before shifting her attention in front of her again concentrating on walking and breathing calmly and on ignoring the female interviewer with her microphone and her questions about all might being a you a teacher hey aren't you that sludge villain boy. The reporter with the brown hair asks excitedly as soon as she sees the light blonde teenager passing by. And that's exactly the moment when Masha's bad temper boils up before Bakugo can actually react to this question. With an evil glare himself, the young tigress turns around slowly piercing the impudent woman with her feline amber eyes upon her fierce gaze. And the low threatening tiger growl that comes up her throat the young journalist winces in fear and steps back in a hurry. The whole crowd behind her reacts to the suddenly dangerous atmosphere sweat dropping and holding their breaths in anxiety slightly surprised even Bakugo shoots Masha, a glance questioning her behavior once again satisfied with the game's silence. The teenage girl turns around again and keeps walking towards the school building Tisk wimps. 
She scoffs the intimidating aura completely gone now Bakugo continues walking next to her raising his eyebrows. Yeah I know I have to get rid of that boiling temper. But you're not the one to give me that look you know. Masha wouldn't admit it, even at the cost of her life. But it was her protective instinct that just made her lose it for a second her inner tigress. Was certainly not okay with that female stranger who tried to stick her nose into sensitive business that has nothing to do with her not to mention. She wasn't thinking about Bakugo's feelings at all bringing that incident up again. I don't need your protection damn cat. Mind your own crap in future or else I'm gonna kill you. The spiky-haired guy shouts angrily, who in the whole world would even consider protecting you? Masha sighs unimpressed, I'm neither Izakian, nor All Might besides it's way too early for you, or those reporter morons to go on my nerves like that so don't talk to me. To give some more point to her words, the young tigress yawns and stretches her body blazing up Bakugo's fury even more. With his flaming red eyes and his hands sparking to life, He's only centimeters away from a rampage, don't order me around. He yells but Masha just rolls her eyes entering the school complex, don't you dare ignore me. The explosive quirk user keeps insisting Masher, really can't help it anymore it's so hilarious watching his reactions. Striving for attention are we? She snickers say, whom are you actually trying to impress here? Cause I'm the only one around right now you know. Shortly before he can hit her with one of his explosion, strikes the tiger girl steps aside, entering the classroom good morning. She cheers lightheartedly and makes her way to her seat, as if nothing had happened followed by an utterly pissed off Bakugo gritting his teeth and burning everyone to ashes with his glares Wo Masha. What did you do to Kakin? Izakion whispers cautiously why me. She puts up a huffy act but smirks at her best friend, the messy-haired boy muffles his giggle with his hands. Soon enough Mr. Aizawa steps into the classroom, looking at his students with his tired eyes, decent work on yesterday's combat training, you guys I watched the video feeds and went over each of your team's results. He praises the class monotonously as ever. Bakugo you're talented so don't sulk like a child over your loss, okay Masha restrains herself, really hard to make sure not to laugh out loud. She just can't express how much she loves Uncle Shota for comments like that also Midoriya. I see the only way you won the match was by breaking your arm again work harder. The teacher scolds the green-haired boy and don't give me the excuse that you can't control it properly that's already getting old your quirk will be very useful if you get control over it so show a little urgency. Iziku beams at the black-haired pro hero after the compliment and nods his head in agreement. Also taking the critique to heart Masha smiles at how adorable her childhood friend is now let's get down to business our first task. We'll decide your future Mr. Aizawa says making the whole class gasp collectively you'll have to pick a class representative the tiger girl groans as expected. Little less drama please. While her classmates are shouting out who wants to be picked the white and black haired girl slumps down on her table considering to take a nap until it's over because that's what Uncle Shota's about to do disappear into his yellow, sleeping bag and sleep until the class has decided not even caring about how they would come to a decision. Did he have a bad influence on her upbringing here? Ida suggests an election in a democratic way, and after all the votes are counted Izuku is finally announced as class rep, and the beautiful black-haired girl with the ponytail, and the functional brain will be his deputy oh her name's Yayorazu Momo, by the way Masha pouts yelling stiff glasses guy Aka Ida would match the class rep image so perfectly, and the young tigress feels how uncomfortable and nervous her friend is at the moment there's definitely no consent. Poor Izakion. Okay you idiots. Who the hell voted for the stupid nerd? Bakugo erupts jumping up from his chair and causing a ruckus again Masha begins to chuckle quietly instantly getting his attention and a death-like scowl keep laughing at me and you're dead. The young tigress challenges him not avoiding his gaze and locking her amber eyes with his. She shows him a confident grin knowing he's not able to do much in the classroom with their teacher still present all right. So the class rep will be Midoriya, and our deputy is Yeyurazu said teacher exclaims remaining in his sleeping bag really. You um, this is not a mistake. The young Midoriya asks his body trembling with anxiety just how did this happen? The black-haired deputy sighs. 
After homeroom, and the class rep election Masha, has to endure boring regular classes again. The young girl really has to struggle to keep her eyes open, even if it's energetic present Mike who's teaching English alright. This month we're going to do a super nifty English project. Who's excited? The blonde pro hero calls out enthusiastically as always. And as always the reaction of the class is rather less responsive the teacher pulls out a piece of paper which is the list of the already set up pairings who are going to have to work together you and your partner will be writing an argumentative piece about a top pro hero. You both need to write an essay, but it'll be graded collectively. Either one of you will have to write about the strengths and weaknesses of the hero. He keeps explaining, while handing out the assignment papers with the names of the pairings Masha blinks at the irony reading the name of her partner, and stifles a giggle noticing that the paper he just received is already burning hay. No torching in my lesson. Present Mike complains, and the young tigress can't hold back her laughter any more innocently. She smiles at the hot head, placing her chin in her palm, I'd rather die. He growls at her in anger before she can say anything oh now that's new. Masher replies in pretended surprise. Actually, I thought you'd tell me to die, so now you have suicidal tendencies interesting. The light blonde boy's red eyes flare up shut your mouth damn cat, or I'll rip it off. He yells despite Mr. Grumpy Cat being her partner. The teenage girl studies her assignment, only to find out that the pro hero she'll have to write about is no other than a racer head making her laugh out loud. Lucky. She cheers and misses someone she can high-five, so the cat girl turns to her best friend, who's dark red in his face while looking at his own paper, and then glimpsing at Ochako. The cute girl smiles back and waves at the green-haired boy to come over awe Izekyun Masha swoons good luck. I'm cheering for ya the young Midoriya starts to panic waving his hands uncontrollably h huh. The Badubi what are you talking about Masha? She smirks mischievously the English project Izekyun of course. I'm talking about the English project what else could I be referring to? His green eyes widen and his blush is so extreme that his freckles seem to disappear you, uh I see. T thanks good luck for you too then L let's give our best. The messy haired guy tries to smile brightly, but fails with an embarrassed grimace before walking over to his partner. Soon enough the morning lessons end and lunch break starts when Masha meets up with Kirishima both of them look for Kaminari after receiving their food. But the electric blonde doesn't seem to be around yet so they sit down and talk about the English assignment, and with whom they got paired with oh boy where's Kaminari again. The young tigress asks impatiently honestly that guy's so damn lazy. The redhead chuckles yeah right. Just remember that unenthusiastic expression on his face during our sports test. As the two friends start to laugh a loud bell rings hurting their ears. Masha winces and presses her hands on her sensitive tiger ears warning. Level 3 Security Breach All students please evacuate the building in an orderly fashion. Kirishima looks at the cat girl first confused, then as he recognizes her flattened ears and her grimacing in pain because of the loud noise worried hey you okay? He puts his arm around her shoulders helping her stand up. She nods. Yet it's just way too loud besides what the heck is a level 3 security breach. The red-haired boy shrugs his shoulders, and they head towards the direction of the exit sign. However they both soon realize that everyone else is doing the exact same thing Kirishima. They hear a familiar voice yell and try to turn around Kaminari's bright blonde hair is easy to spot even in a panicking crowd. Dude I can't get out. Nevertheless Masha's relieved to see him unharmed scared yes, but still fine we can't either it's too overcrowded. The tiger girl shouts back at her friend, who tries to somehow make his way through the mob. Suddenly the young girl gets squeezed between two other bodies clashing with their elbows and shoulders Masha. Hold on to me tight. Kirishima cries out grabbing her hand hey you guys. Kaminari reaches out to them again. And this time the young tigress is able to take his hand as well however, as they get stuck in the narrow exit way, with more and more rushing people their way out of this stampede, seems to get farther and farther away at the realization of being stuck. And unable to move freely a sudden feeling of suffocation rises in Masha's chest Kirishima Kaminari Masha. 
She can hear Ida's voice from who knows where, but the two other boys don't notice. Because they try to calm down the panicking students around them, the white and black-haired girl starts to feel trapped and recognizes her body reacting to this feeling. It's loud, it's packed with scared and shouting people, everyone smells differently. She gets pushed around and smashes against multiple body parts of unknown students. Constantly a low and aggressive growl forms in her throat and Masha forces herself to suppress it. She gives her best to focus on breathing and to remember her meditation skills to calm herself down. But deep down inside of her rage and anxiety are boiling slowly pressing to the surface her heart begins to race. And another rush of people makes it even worse causing the teenage girl to let go of Kirishima's and Kaminari's hands voluntarily in order not to hurt them with a too strong grip. Or with her claws that are attempting to break through, she clenches her fists as tight as possible to prevent that. But notices that her black tight stripes are covering her arm already. Masha's very close to losing control over her quirk powers. Recognizing this does not help to put her mind at ease. Though she knows she could hurt a lot of people in a situation like that fighting back her biggest fear. The tiger girl soon is able to hear a familiar voice cursing in pure anger back off you damn idiots. Sparkling off a couple of tiny explosions on his palms back you go. Has only a little bit more room than anyone else. But what's more important he's standing in front of a corner focusing her senses on the annoyed blonde boy. She drags herself through a bunch of students. Without touching him, or talking to him Masha pinions herself against the wall behind him facing the corner, and cowering down right before the moment her claws finally grow out to their full length. The young tigress crosses her arms over her chest, gripping on her own shoulders, strongly the pain she feels when her own. Tiger claws perforate her shoulders relieves her, because that means she has hurt herself, and not someone else she closes her eyes and forces in deep breaths, her ears still flattened down to her head. She keeps pressing herself into that corner and concentrates on the feeling that the cool wall leaves behind on her hot skin. Listen up. Everything is okay. Masha hears Ida's voice after something landed on the exit sign right above her head. Did he just jump there? It's just the media outside. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Glasses boy continues to soothe his fellow students with trembling lips, tears, and her closed eyes and a shaking body the young girl hopes that they will listen to him. Were you a student we have to stay calm and prove that we're the best of the best oh boy that sounds arrogant as hell no kidding. It takes a few more minutes until the whole bulk of frightened students dissolves little by little with everyone returning to their respective classes Masha can hear Ochako and Izakyun help Ida climb down from his perch above the shining exit sign praising him for his speech. The hell are you doing stupid cat? Bakugo scoffs at her oi Bakugo. That's not very nice at least read the mood bro. Kirishima scolds him. Yeah even I can tell she's scared you're no help dude. Kaminari adds and the light blonde boy yells back at the two. Maybe she's suffering from claustrophobia glasses Ida takes a guess no Izuku disagrees seriously gaining the attention from all his classmates who are still around in the hallway. She tries to contain herself, we should wait until she has calmed down a bit you guys go on ahead to classes. I will stay behind Masha could actually kiss the green-haired guy for his far-sightedness. He's the one who understands her the best after all what are you saying Deku? She hears Ochako protest all of a sudden, we can't just leave her like that. Look her shoulders are clearly wounded, she's bleeding. We have to help her. The young tigress notices steps coming closer and presses herself against the wall, even stronger, no 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 no. Izakyun please do something. Hurry up. Ah no, Yuraraka stay back. The messy haired boy shouts, but it's too late the brown haired cute girl has already reached out to touch Masha's arm, softly with her fingers to check on her upon the gentle contact Masha's head jerks up. And she shows her fangs hissing Ochako flinches with a surprised squeal, and her big eyes grow even wider than usual woe. Kirishima blurts out what the heck. Kaminari wonders at the same time, and Izuku takes Ochako's arm to pull her back a few steps, placing himself between her and the tiger girl Deku. What? Ochako whines fear clouding her voice. Now that all of them have seen her face with the fierce eyes, the long fangs and the cheeks covered in black tiger stripes, she feels ashamed of herself. 
She just scared her kind classmate Midoriya. Can you explain this to us please? Ida asks in his usual polite and neutral fashion with Kirishima and Kaminari. Nodding along only Bakugo keeps his red eyes on the cowering cat girl feeling the same threatening aura he felt when she glared at the reporter mob. This morning not sure if he's just disgusted about her showing so much weakness or rather fascinated. Those amber eyes he hates to admit that he's able to clearly feel her powers, and yet she sits in that damn corner. The spiky-haired boy grits his teeth, what the hell stupid cat. Masha has some problems to control her quirk, when she loses her temper Izakian starts to explain usually that's not a big problem anymore, because she has learned to contain it properly, but in stressful situations like this panic, she's afraid of hurting someone not of the situation itself but of losing control over her powers as expected from her best friend. That's put very nicely Masha could have laughed if she hadn't been trying to keep her sanity. So with shoving herself into that corner, she actually tries to protect us and not herself. Kirishima asks, and the messy-haired boy nods, that's why we shouldn't get close to her until she calmed down Masha would feel awfully guilty if she ended up hurting any one of us her quirk is very strong worriedly his adorable green eyes rest on his childhood friend see can't we do anything. Ochako asks again. I am not afraid at all. She puts on a brave expression despite her still shaking voice Bakugo rolls his red eyes. But the young Midoriya steps forward I'll try. But you guys have to keep your distance he walks over to the young cat girl and kneels down at arm's length to be at eye level with her Hey Masha Izakyun says lightheartedly, and shows her a smile when her feline eyes lock with his It's me Izuku you recognize me right. The young tigress blinks multiple times her hard gaze slowly fading away. It's okay now the crowd is gone. You can move freely he assures her in a soft tone, and she concentrates on his friendly voice, and the very familiar scent finally the black stripes in her face, and on her arms begin to disappear Izukayan. He sighs with great relief and his smile grows wide and bright um he nods, and the cat girl smiles right back at him. Thanks the green-haired boy stands up, and helps his friend on her feet to their other friends lighten up as well, until they see the amount of blood her uniform has been soaked in on her shoulders her claws are still stuck there so her hands should cover the biggest part but standing there with her arms crossed over her chest also feels awkward sorry. You guys Masha apologizes still holding onto her shoulders. Then she faces Ochako, I've shown you something pretty scary huh? The brown-haired girl shakes her head strongly nope not at all. More importantly what happened to your shoulders? Do they hurt very badly? Did you get injured in the mob earlier? She exchanges an uncomfortable glimpse with Izuku oh a uh, no that is um. Not exactly she stutters helplessly and Bakugo lets out an annoyed groan leave her. She's just weak. He scoffs. Surprisingly, the young Midoriya shoots him a deadly glare with his usually calm and friendly green eyes Kekin. His tone is sharp as a knife, and the light blonde raises his eyebrows, so the wimp finally shows some guts. He's certainly not very pleased with this, but before he can start a fight with Dan Dekumasha, also narrows her eyes at Bakugo beginning to very slowly pull out her long and sharp tiger claws of her own flesh, blood drenches her hands, her shoulders, and her uniform, and also starts dripping down on the clean floor in the hallway. Well if high and mighty you says so who am I to disagree, she sneers right back at him. And for a short moment, the spiky-haired boy stares at her with his mouth slightly agape, until she starts talking to the green-haired boy. Let him be someone like him will never understand. He's not worth it. That comment lets Bakugo's anger erupt again. However he doesn't get the chance to express it, because the others start surrounding Masha in concern dang girl. What did you do to yourself? A more than shocked Kirishima puts an arm around her waist to support her. Don't tell me you did all of that only to avoid hurting someone in the crowd. Then you also let go off our hands by yourself right? I thought it was accidentally, and was feeling guilty. The electric blonde Kaminari points out and Bakugo clenches his fists, digging them deeply into his pockets tch. He turns his head away and starts walking off in a huff, what a waste of his time. We have to get you treated immediately. Ochako panics, oh don't worry the pain is endurable Masha comments to everybody's astonishment. 
But this blood loss isn't Ida claims back equally calm and matter-of-fact by the way with this splattered uniform. You can't go back to classes. She looks down on her clothes. Oh you do have a point the tiger girl admits you um Ida. I don't think that's the problem here. Izuku argues and Ochako puts her hands on her mouth pfft. You guys are funny sorry Masha. The young tigress just responds with a crooked grin. Suddenly Kirishima picks her up holding the cat girl in his arms like a princess. Hey, I suggest I take her to the infirmary quickly you guys should hurry and go back to classes it's no use. If all of us get punished by Mr. Aizawa later the others nod in agreement and Kaminari gives the crimson head a thumb up and a sneaky grin way to go man. He praises causing Masha to blush a little bit that's not necessary you know. I can still walk by myself, she mumbles, but the red-haired smiles brightly and starts running down the hallway numb no sweat. We'll be right there I'm pretty strong, and you weigh almost nothing Masha chuckles that's some compliment. Now also the red-haired boy's cheeks grow pinkish, he carries her all the way down to the infirmary, where they have recovery girl treat Masha's wounds. When entering homeroom classes afterwards Ida is standing at the front with Izuku and his deputy if Midoriya is nominating me next for this job. Then I humbly accept I plan to carry out the duties of the class rep to the best of my abilities. The glasses boy proclaims and Izukiyan looks truly happy with this development so does Masha congrats Ida. Finally his stiff intelligent glasses class rep image will be confirmed he puffs out his chest in pride and smiles confidently, I highly appreciate your support. Kirishima and Masha hand over a document signed by recovery girl to Mr. Aizawa to proof their reason for being absent the black-haired teacher furrows his brows at the cat girl. Now wearing her royal blue athletic clothes examining her silently before sending both of them to their seats. The young tigress spaces off the rest of homeroom until the final bell rings and releases her after packing her stuff sluggishly and being questioned by Uncle Shota about her injuries. She finds Bakugo outside of the classroom, leaning against the wall and scowling at her with his red eyes, we're gonna meet up for that stupid English project tomorrow after school. He commands growling we're gonna be first to hand it in, and it's gonna be perfect or else you're gonna die. And with that said, he turns around and stomps away, leaving a dumbfounded Masha in front of the classroom there, he goes the perfectionist. The young tigress sighs that guy really has no right to call Izakian a nerd with that attitude. By the way she has to tell him that they won't have to rely on the internet as a source because she already knows about many of Uncle Shota's strengths and weaknesses. And there he told her he'd rather die after receiving the assignment. He even burnt the frickin' paper. Masha rolls her amber eyes, she wouldn't have expected him to tell her to meet up with him one problem less at least, but spending a whole afternoon with Mr. Angry Bird is definitely not going to be a picnic with an annoyed grown Masha shoulders her backpack and makes her way back home Masha sits in a cafe with Bakugo for some time now and is actually very surprised at how calm and focused he can be. Drinking her third milkshake through a colorful straw, she watches the light blonde boy reading her notes about Eraserhead that she wrote the evening before at the last moment. His usually angry face looks neutral for once, and his red eyes aren't fiercely glaring. But yeah pretty once again the young tigress realizes how attractive this guy looks against her own, while she restrains an annoyed sigh, and just hopes that she won't blush sitting so close next to him. And he smells nice like really nice most people would think that remark is weird, unless a certain perfume is meant. But for Masha liking or disliking a human scent is very common, not that she's ever gonna tell him. With a thoughtful expression, he switches his attention to his own notes, biting down on his pencil in concentration, where the hell did you find all that crap? Bakugo grumbles displeased. The cat girl shrugs her shoulders and puts her empty glass on the table. That's just everything I know from personal experience, since Eraserhead is an underground hero who hates being on TV. Or giving interviews, there's nothing much you can actively research. I'm quite surprised present Mike took him as an assignment to work on now his eyes go back to a scowl again, what do you mean personal experience? Masha tries to hide her disappointment, seeing his red eyes hardening again Uncle Shota is my godfather or guardian, or however you want to call it. And I had quirk training once a week with him, 
before I entered you, a since the age of nine also with other voluntary pro-heroes. But that's not relevant for our argument, she explains and Bakugo furrows his brows even more at her in disbelief. Why would a damn little loser like you have quirk training with pro-heroes and even have one as a guardian? He suddenly erupts, and the former peaceful atmosphere is gone for good the teenage girl exhales wearily, that's actually absolutely none of your business, you know. She shoots back at him, but goes on with her story anyways, I'm an adopted child with a quirk that's classified as dangerous and uncontrollable, so I have to take therapy sessions and quirk training, and someone has to monitor our family on a regular basis. That someone is Uncle Shota for my mom and me so of course, I have a bit more information about him than other people do with gritted teeth. He stares into her amber eyes tch. Abruptly he breaks eye contact and turns his head away from her, we can't use that idiot. We'll need evidence for information used for a school project, the light blonde boy says that sneeringly, but he has stopped shouting at her much to Masha's confusion, she looks at the clock on her smartphone briefly. You've got some time left. The cat girl asks back Hugo, who started to read over his own notes, once again. Yeah of course I want to finish this stupid project today why? She smiles at him, and gets up from her seat perfect, stretching her body, she turns around to go and pay her milkshakes. If you want evidence I'm gonna show ya. But before Masha can actually pull her purse out of her backpack, she gets pushed from behind and stumbles towards the door go wait outside Bakugo grunts, still looking somehow displeased and Masha wonders. If this is just his usual expression, you don't have to pay for me, we're only doing schoolwork, she reminds the blonde. But he avoids her eyes and shoves his hands into his pockets wait outside. He repeats now clearly pissed, but still not yelling at her. Um okay thanks then the young tigress leaves the cafe and sighs that guy honestly is confusing as hell. Is he actually trying to be nice or something? Or maybe rather containing his temper? And finishing the project today. A school assignment that is supposed to take several weeks to be completed in only one day. He's just crazy. That's beyond being perfectionistic. Then again, he's the one calling poor Izakyun a nerd. As Bakugo exits the cafe shortly after her the blonde spiky-haired boy eyes her up from head to toe. Skeptically Masha looks down on her outfit as well, but can't find anything strange about camouflage shorts, a black sleeveless top, and black boots. So she returns his intense gaze calmly, until he starts walking so where are we going? He questions her with his dark and raspy voice first to the bus stop and then to the so-called Psychological Institute for Quirk Traumata or Short P.I. Q.T. the young tigress informs him. Or as I sometimes also call it my second home, the blonde suddenly stops walking and raises his eyebrows. Why the hell would I go to a freaking therapy center with ya? He barks demanding an explanation. To get rid of your anger issues. The tiger girl suggests innocently, and only snickers at the dead-like glare he shoots at her die. Bakugo deadpans while waiting for her actual explanation because they have documents and video files of my fights and lessons with the pro-heroes, and since it's an official institution. We can use it as a source for the project, he finishes her sentence, didn't think you'd be so useful the spiky-haired boy admits through his gritted teeth, as he starts walking again and Masha can't help but to burst out in laughter. Whoa that coming from you. The world's gonna end tomorrow. She jokes be quiet stupid cat. He claims back angrily, but is still not able to look at her properly stubbornly. He stares at the street ahead of him, and concentrates on walking despite feeling kind of awkward in a situation like this. The cat girl smirks, and keeps up with his pace spending the rest of the time until they arrive at the institute in silence. However right before the two of them, are about to enter the foyer Masha turns around to face the light blonde head on Bakugo. She starts and bites down on her lip please do me a favor and don't yell at the kids okay. At his threatening red glare, she just raises a hand to stop him. I'm not trying to mock you the young tigress clarifies. I'm being serious here. They've been through a lot in their young lives already. They don't need you to make it even worse. You don't have to interact with them. If you don't want to I can understand if someone doesn't like to hang around children. But if you've got nothing nice to say to them just keep your mouth shut or ignore them 
or something without waiting for his answer Masha finally enters the therapy center feeling Bakugo's gaze on her back. It really pisses me off when you do that. He suddenly blurts out causing her to turn around again, blinking in confusion what? She twitches one of her tiger ears questioningly, but Bakugo has turned his head to the side, as if she truly offended him. Surrender to me without putting up a proper fight. He clarifies do me a favor. Are you stupid? Just tell me you're gonna kick my ass if I do something to those damn brats if they're so precious to you. For a second Masha is completely taken aback and gapes at the blonde boy with her mouth wide open. But the moment she realizes what he just told her, she starts laughing uncontrollably which of course is only adding fuel to the fire of Bakugo's anger. Oh boy. Are you serious? Did you even listen to yourself? The young tigress finally manages to ask and wipes away some tears of laughter surter. Putting up a proper fight. Gosh my ears hurt. She scoffs back Hugo. I was just being polite. I asked you for something. Because that's what you usually do. If you want anything from another person just ask you no. That's very common people don't always shout bloody murder to get what they want. In fact you're the only one I know who thinks that attitude is appropriate. The young girl shakes her head still not able to believe what she just heard besides, if I told you I'd kick your ass, you'd also be pissed and shout at me right. So it actually doesn't really matter what I do or say, even if I'm not trying to annoy the hell out of you for fun. I get the feeling that you're always mad at me for no reason. But before Bakugo gets the chance to proof Masha's statement in the middle of the Institute's lobby both of them are welcomed by a beaming young woman in athletic clothes who hugs the cat girl happily after the young tigress, explained the friendly staff member the reason for her visiting the therapy center with a classmate she takes the two students to the archive and shows them where they can find the video files and some documents which could be used as a proper source. Thanks Elena Masha cheers waving at the white-haired nice lady who disappears into the lift on her way back to the yoga lesson. She'll be holding for the kids in a few minutes the white and black-haired girl sits down next to Bakugo watching one fight with Uncle Shota, after another starting with the ones right after she moved into the institute at the age of nine years. However, she soon begins to notice how his facial expression hardens again as time passes by even though the blonde boy doesn't take it out on her this time, she feels his restrained rage and Bakugo being so awfully quiet this whole time. Somehow makes it even worse kinda scary Masha suppresses a sigh and rolls her amber eyes instead now what? Actually she already stopped trying to find logical factors causing his aggression. But today the spiky haired teen acts even more strange than she's used to you never take anything seriously do ya damn cat. The light blonde finally asks after he's put down his pen and the young girl shifts her attention from the video file to her angry classmate. Where the heck does that suddenly come from? She shoots right back at him expressing her annoyance in her tone cause you never give it your all. Not while fighting that lazy teacher, not during our sports test, and you even missed our first hero training taken. A goddamn afternoon nap at the infirmary you're not afraid to dare challenge me. But you avoid starting a real confrontation watching someone being so half-assed drives me crazy, makes me want to beat the crap out of ya. Yet I've had a very short impression of your true powers, but can't help but to think they're completely wasted on a stupid little loser like you. Just couldn't stand it seeing you cowering down in that corner, being afraid of yourself, that was so damn pathetic. Why the hell are you even trying to become a hero like that? It's an insult. And there you were telling me off claiming, I'd be the one who couldn't make it with my attitude. Don't make me laugh. You can't be serious. If you dare to continue looking down on me like that you're gonna die. After Bakugo's explosion Masha exhales very slowly, while he's still glaring at her with his red eyes that was unexpected it surprises her that he's taking all that so seriously, and that the blonde boy even cares about what she does, or rather doesn't do. The young tigress never thought about him watching her so closely. And suddenly her heart jumps after noticing he paid that much attention the cat girl scratches her neck, not sure if he actually expects her to answer, or if he was just ranting you really don't know how to be sensitive or a bit considerate huh? I wasn't living in the therapy center and still have to take sessions every week for no reason at least try to think about stuff like that too. She scolds him, but soon grins at Bakugo again, 
As he raises his eyebrows after her comment, you see my past, and also my own attitude are kinder really messed up. I've been through a lot in very early years of my childhood, and I've done many things I'm not very proud of then there's still that issue of my bad temper, and that I have problems to control my quirk powers. So maybe you're right, I've never seen myself as a hero, and it wasn't me who wanted to enter UA. But there are some people who believe in me that I'd be able to make it as a hero. So I kinda want to answer to the feelings of those who are most important in my life. Sometimes I think maybe they wanted me to enroll into UA. To make sure that I wouldn't end up as a villain. Because they're also afraid of my powers. But even if that's the case I can't really blame them. I thought about it so many times. Is it actually okay for someone like me to try to become a hero? Could I even be called a hero if I made it through UA? And do I want to be considered as a hero? To be honest, I'm still not so sure about all that my top priority at the moment is to learn self-control to be able to use my quirk at my own will and to not hurt any people ever again that might sound weird for anyone who doesn't know about my background story. But for me that's essential after that I can start thinking about upgrading the idea of not hurting people myself to saving people's lives with the help of my powers. But before I'm able to do that I have to be sure I'm not a threat myself I think if everyone else in our class is starting at zero, then I have to start at minus 10 or something, because I'm already having problems with the most basic kinds of things same goes for Izekian who has to learn not to break his own body the two of us will have to put in a lot more work and effort if we want to achieve our goals and unlike him I'm not aiming for the top. I don't want to be number one so just let me clarify one thing here. I'm not looking down on you. I never was from the beginning. I'm just not challenging your dominance. I think you could say I already know my place that has nothing to do with surrendering to you because I would never do that even at the cost of my life. It's more not being competitive and dealing with my own stuff. Instead however teasing you is still kind of fun so don't expect me to stop that. And I can promise you that much. If you ever dare to hurt Izakyun again, you're the one who's gonna die. Besides, you honestly need to do something about your aggressions, they're not healthy. With that much being said, Masha begins to search for the next fighting video shut up. Don't tell me what to do stupid cat. And don't always start talking about that damn Deku. He's making me sick. Finally, Baku goes back to his usual self and yelling again, and the cat girl giggles about the fuming teenager next to her that's not funny. What do you think Jivin me that crap about knowing your place? I've seen your true self. You're way more than what you're trying to make me think, and I already know that so start acting like it for God's sake. Masha's light-hearted smile fades, and she locks her amber feline eyes with his her look, has nothing playful anymore Bakugo. You've never seen only the slightest bit of my true self, and you better be very grateful for it, because I'm praying every day that no one of our classmates will ever find out about who I really am my true self wouldn't hesitate to kill you and I mean it literally. On the contrary, it would want to hunt you down and slice you, I'm just a predator in human shape, and I'm working my ass off to somehow be able to change, or at least control, that the light blonde boy returns her strong and serious gaze, his red eyes only widened a little bit. But it's enough for the young tigress to realize that her words have reached him, so she goes back to smiling at her classmate again, while wow, that's actually the longest, smoothest, calmest, and most serious and honest conversation we ever had up until now. She states, making it sound very special, causing the spiky-haired boy to grimace in disgust TCH, he sneers and breaks eye contact. Yeah, whatever Bakugo says, as if he wouldn't care at all despite glimpsing at the cat girl from the corner of his eye. You call me Katsuki in future. He commands much to Masha's surprise, she stares at him and shows him a genuine smile. At first Bakugo doesn't really know what's going on, as he starts to feel somehow uncomfortable looking at the beaming girl, also noticing a slight sparkle in her beautiful amber eyes wait. Beautiful. Hell no. So we're on first name basis now. The young tigress asks sounding so awfully excited. You can call me Masha too. Yeah no only the thought of it makes his damn heart skip a beat in your dreams stupid cat. The blonde claims back trying to remain calm on the outside, but is easily distracted by Masha's high laughter. Hearing my family name from you is just ridiculous. I can't even imagine you talking formally if you wanted to it sounds dumb. 
Not that he's the one to talk knowing that the teenage girl's laughing grows more intense and Bakugo. No Katsuki scowls at her with furrowed brows the two you. A students go back to work on their English project in silence, watching videos, checking documents, and taking notes until the hothead is satisfied with the amount of information at last on their way back to the entrance of the institute Masha and Katsuki take the lift back to the first floor. But as soon as the doors open automatically, they run into a whole bunch of kids who recognize the white and black-haired girl right away Masha. It's Masha. They begin to squeal surrounding her in the hallway. Excitedly, what are you doing here? Did you have your therapy session today? Who is that? Do you know him? Is he your boyfriend? Did you come over to greet our newbie with us? Tons of questions are asked at the same time, and little hands begin to pluck on her clothes, and her fingers hey. You guys calm down a bit, not everyone at once please. Masha smiles and ruffles the hair of the boys, while most of the girls group hug with her meanwhile Katsuki, keeps his distance putting his hands into his pockets, and leaning against a wall, he watches the cat girl interacting with the brats, and is quite surprised that she seems to be very popular her facial expression, is soft her amber eyes look at the children affectionately, and she talks to them with a calm and friendly voice like a completely different person, he thinks doesn't suit her at all that wimpy ass bullshit. The question is why on earth does he even care about it? In the end, they're both dragged along by the kids to a big and empty room with mirrors covering one wall, and with several yoga mats on the floor Masha tries her best to explain why she's paying a visit without having a session who Katsuki is and what her school. Project is all about until the group arrives at the gym where the white-haired Elena from earlier is already waiting with a small boy. The young tigress gasps in shock, and also Katsuki stares at the little kid in disbelief the tiny and rather thin boy has light blue messy hair big adorable eyes in the same color, and his freckles spread not only over his cheeks, but also over his little snub nose where big round glasses are placed his hair is a bit shorter, and the color is also different, but altogether he looks so much like Izakyun at the age of about six years that Masha has to hold her breath for a second. Just then she notices the child's insecurity sadness and fear. While seeming calm and neutral on the outside and her tiger ears and tail droop in sympathy, everyone please stop causing trouble for Masha and her friend, they have to do homework for school. The young staff member scolds softly and gives the two students an apologetic look, let's greet our new buddy together. This is Asamu Kun his name can be read as courage or bravery isn't that cool. And we will try our best so that he can feel comfy with us. As the other kids start clapping their hands and shouting friendly greetings the small Isamu fixes his blue eyes on the floor and holds on to the fabric of his own too big t-shirt tightly Elena asks them to sit down on their mats and calm down for a moment for the last evening meditation before preparing to go to bed and comes over to talk to Masha and Katsuki. I'm very sorry you two whenever they see Masha they're just uncontrollable for me because everyone is so attached to you. But I think it's okay for you to go now I'll distract them with new breathing techniques. The young tigress smiles at the white-haired young woman. But before she's able to give her an answer the little blue-haired boy appears at Elena's side staring at Masha. The cat girl kneels down to be at eye level with him. Hi Asamu I'm Masha. And this is my classmate at you. A Kastiki nice to meet you. He glimpses briefly at Katsuki who faces the boy with a rather neutral expression, which Masha's truly grateful for, and quickly shifts his attention back to the tiger girl. Is it really true that you killed people? Isamu asks with a trembling and low voice and Alina covers her mouth with one hand, while Katsuki turns around and shoots her a more than surprised gaze with his red eyes. I heard the other kids talk about you, and the doctor said we're all being honest with each other here the tiny boy adds, and the young tigress heaves a sigh right. That's the institute's policy, you can talk about everything at any time, and no one will judge you yes it's true. She confirms and tries to ignore her classmates intense, staring when I arrived here at the institute at the age of nine I had killed five people after losing control over my quirk Isamu just nods understandingly. They can help you here, so that it won't happen again. But it's still something that you'll never forget for the rest of your life so you have to learn to accept what happened, and that it wasn't your fault Masha explains, thinking that something similar must have occurred in the small boy's life, 
After seeing his reactions, he puts one hand on his chest right above his heart, and his cute eyes fill up with tears, it hurts so bad inside. He sobs causing Masha and Elena to put their arms around his tiny body carefully yes it does, and it will for quite a while. But you're not alone we're all here for you Masha assures him with Elena nodding along in agreement. And suddenly all the other children get up from their mats to come closer and comfort their new friend in silence. They extend their small hands to touch the body of the crying boy slightly to prove Masha's words that Asamu's not alone all the kids put their hands on his arms his shoulders and his chest to let him feel them being there for him whenever he would need it from now on after witnessing a scene like that it's very hard for the white and black haired girl to take her leave with Katsuki with a very heavy atmosphere surrounding the two students they walk down the road to the bus stop together quietly. I'm sorry for that Katsuki. And thanks I guess Masha says insecurely when they finally got on the bus and had their seats. But the light blonde boy only shrugs it off. It's a damn therapy center for noisy brats he states. As if that would explain everything you better work hard stupid cat. He adds after a short pause and the cat girl can't help. But to curl up the corners of her mouth. A little while later Masha wonders about the spiky haired teen still sitting next to her in the same bus. Aren't you living somewhere near Izakian? You missed your stop. He crosses his arms over his chest and glares at her as an answer. Shut up damn cat. I'm not so stupid. I'm gonna walk you home it's late. As her cheeks are heating up and her smile grows wide again, her playful cat character wants to tease the blonde to deflect the attention away from her own pounding heart. Aw oh, really? That's so nice of you Tilda the cat girl coos and thank you very much for the date. Katsuki almost jumps from his seat, hearing that although he doesn't know why. I swear I'm gonna murder you and dump your dead body somewhere no one's ever gonna find it. He screams. That was no freaking date. Masha begins to giggle again. But you paid for me. She protests. You're so cute when you're being flustered. And thus they keep quarreling like that until they arrive at Masha's apartment. And since Katsuki still insists on finishing the argument they agree on pulling an all-nighter at home to write their essays, and to compare them in the English lesson, the next day, and also to hand them in in the same lesson already. 